five to four. With 159 of the clock, the force end up with a tying goal. Stolmeyer looking, finds Craig Allen, and the force most prolific goal scorer in their history equalizes it at five. It sets the stage here for sudden death. Lattice with the ball. Clavillo will make a run from the left-hand side of your screen. Here he comes, unattended. A great shot. He beats P.J. Johns over his right ear to the near side. Soccer's win game one. The MISL celebrates its 10th anniversary season as FNN Score and Bud Sports in association with Madison Square Garden presents the championship series. The Cleveland Force meet the San Diego Soccers. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers and proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. By Metropolitan Life and affiliated companies, get met, it pays. And by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, Gatorade is thirst aid for that deep down body thirst. We're inside the San Diego Sports Arena for game number two in the best of seven championship series. The Cleveland Force looking to gain a split and then take the series back to Cleveland where they'll be for the next three games on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. A pleasant good evening, everyone. Welcome to game two of the championship series. I'm John Paul Della Camera. Game one was a strange game in that it was tied five different occasions. Neither team led by more than one goal at any time. Cleveland was able to score the first goal, but then Kevin Crow scored shorthanded, and then Paul Dougherty on a power play. And from then on, San Diego always managed the lead. Yet both coaches were not happy with the team's play, and both teams had their reasons for it. We talk first with Timo Leakoski before tonight's game. Well, uh, San Diego was able to take advantage of uh, what happened have been our strengths in a, a playoff so far which is our power play we had converted over half of our chances uh, our penalty killing had been good and they were able to uh, take care of that and of course uh, uh, they got a couple goals on a defensive lapses uh, which we weren't real happy about as well and uh, uh, goalkeeping distribution out of the back playing out of the back I think we need to concentrate a little more on that my feeling is if you play them even uh, we should be in fine shape because uh, five, uh, five against five, uh, we can compete against San Diego, and I know we get scoring chances, so uh, we will get some goals. We had several players, or I thought, uh, didn't play up to their usual um, playoff performance, uh, but we still won. I, I guess that's the good part of it. Um, I found Cleveland to be much more difficult than, in, in many cases than I, uh, I expected. Uh, we couldn't put them away. Although we got in the lead several times, they came back immediately and scored. Um, so I, I can see it's going to be a very long series but uh, right now we got the first game under our belt and that I think was very important for us the force look for a split on the road they've done well on the road in the playoffs they beat Dallas twice they beat Minnesota once so Seamus Mallon they know it can be done they do indeed know that and they've uh, got to forget this notion of the last game getting away from them they still have to concentrate and win and to do that they got to play better defense they recognize that they've had some excellent performances from some players and they look to those players for leadership. I think in particular Kai Haskovy had a wonderful defensive game, but you also wanted him to be scoring. Stolmeyer has scored a lot of goals for them, but you look to him for kind of inspirational defense. So let's hope that these two players from the Cleveland point of view will give the kind of inspiration that will lift up the other players' games. And on the other side for the San Diego Soccer's, it's a big game for them because the next three are in Cleveland. Indeed, and they've got to get some good defensive performances too. They make a change in goal tonight. Zoli, the goalie, Zoltan Tov comes in. And my guess is that he may be there for a while because Gorsuch did not look that sharp in the first game. But uh, Clavillo was uh, the man of the hour for them. Scored the important fifth goal, got the winner in overtime. And his kind of leadership, I think, is going to be what they're looking for in the San Diego side. And we know who's starting in goal for the Cleveland Force. It'll be P.J. Johns making his 27th consecutive start. So we have it for you. Coming up next, game seven championship series as both goalkeepers get set for action. P.J. John Janot is going to be in the nets for the Cleveland Force. He has been their Iron Man since the injury, which occurred right here to Victor Negra. And on the opposite side, Zoltan Toth, who won three consecutive games before being given a breather, and Jim Gorsuch go, going in on Wednesday, will return to the nets. Ron Newman told us before the game that he's uncertain as to who will be in the nets for the next game. He may or may not be alternating like he did during the regular season. So we'll see how this one gets started. Cleveland got off to the early lead the other night, one to nothing, and then 
San Diego ended up tying it, going ahead, and never trailed after that. Starting it out in front of P.J. Johnson, we look first at Zoltan Toth. Will be Crow and Quinn, Carlos Tabrizzi, Perez, and Flavio. That's a look at Zoli, the goalie. The best goalkeeper statistically this season in a major indoor soccer league. And on the opposite side, P.J. Johns, who had the long layoff. Some say that uh, some of the goals may have been a result of that long layoff. But he made some big saves as well in that game. Timo Leakoski was more worried that it would affect the goalkeeper, as he should be during that interim break. Here's John Stolmeyer as we're underway. He and Desmond Armstrong at the back. Gino DeFoyo, Kai Haskelly, and Andy Schmetzer are up front. Ball played up now to Andy Schmetzer. One by Tabrizzi. He's being used as a defensive runner. Now he goes to the bench. Crow coming back to Clavijo. Picked up by Stolmeyer, almost picked up by Armstrong, and now it's Brian Quinn, the MVP of the playoffs a couple of seasons ago. Quinn getting healthy, which he has not been all season for the Sockers. Who knows how many games they might have won had he been healthy. Same with Perez. They only lost 14. Crow. Quinn lets it go. He wanted Carrots. Carrots not expecting it. Now it's Clavijo. Two goals the other night, including the game winner. And now it's DeFlorio. For Andy Spencer. DeFlorio knows he's got a job to do. Mostly defensively is where his mistakes occurred the other night. He scored one goal, but he gave up two, and he knows as well as anyone that he's going to atone for that, with the force giving him a chance to do that. Here's Hoskovy putting it in for Armstrong, and Tove just missed it. But there's Hoskovy again, like he was the other night, looking for the big play. Andy Spencer back in his own zone. Bounces it off for P.J. Johns. Scoreless tie, 13.50 to go, first quarter. Looking for Armstrong, and Sockers made a change there on the bench, enabling him to steal it. Hugo Perez, near the midfield line. Plays it up now to McCallis. Readying up the right footer, and then it's blocked once. He'll try again. Hey, P.J. got a piece of it. Off his left hand to Brixie. Out to Fernandez. Tees it up. It went off Hermes. That may have been closer to the net had it not been deflected. Off the board, Hermes. Can't control it. Kai Hoskabe up for Craig Allen. Another two-goal scorer the other night. Allen has scored more goals than anyone for the force in their history. The biggest Craig Allen to the right side. Valentine taking the shot. It's blocked. Valentine back for it. And now plays it back to Meppel. Right side of Valentine. And now it's Dargle to Meppel. Hermes knocked it away. Over the line he comes. Hermes outside of the box. Save P.J. Johns. And now it's McCallis to Hermes. Sockers put the heat on early. Out to McCallis. 12.34 to play. A shot too high. That was more like a pass high off the glass or so it appeared. Lanasur to Hermes. Now it's McCallis. Into the box, but Meppa knocked it away. Valentine coming back. Carl Valentine up the right wing side. Slowed down by Brian Quinn. Plays it on the left side to Meppa. Scoreless tie, 12 7 first quarter. Here's Dennis Meppa for the force. Off the boards, he's passing to himself, and Toth got a piece. Long shot from Allen is way wide. Julie Me, the career leader in so many categories for this team. To Fernandez. Quinn has it knocked away. Allen with it. Walt Schmetzer made the play defensively. Allen shot off. Built the post. And upstairs, a quarter kick with a big play there for Cleveland and San Diego's goalkeeper. A very important play indeed. Uh, well stolen and a good shot on goal and a nice parry save. But uh, Schmetzer was all alone waiting for that to, to come to him, and it did not come to him. As we take a look again, you see the good uh, tip-up save. Schmetzer was cruising in the middle there as his defender arrived in your picture there, but he arrived late. Uh, and Schmetzer would have been in a good spot for a rebound. Corner kick coming up. Mepham will put it in play. Off the boards, and Tolt punches it out. Loose ball, Walt Spencer, but we've got a foul. As Dougherty hit the canvas. Kevin Crow will put it in play. He had the shorthanded goal the other night that woke the Sockers up. Now it's Allen again. Cleveland needs a big playoff performance from Craig Allen if they're to beat San Diego. Allen, their Budweiser MVP during the regular season. Tote from Dougherty. Up for Brian Quinn. Good knock on the left to Clavijo. 
Flamijo against Desmond Armstrong. Nice ball on the right. Julie B. Tees it up and it goes upstairs. And that gives Cleveland a good bit of a breather because it was a good offensive opportunity that time for the San Diego Sockers. A look at Hugo Perez on the sidelines. Perez had a couple of goals. Let's take a look at what he had to say after game one Wednesday night. P.J. Johns will have a restart as we come back as John Stolmeyer will get it. Stolmeyer plays it on the left side to DeFlorio. And now back to Stolmeyer. Holding it now, looking for Dougherty, who made the block. Paul Dougherty to the left wing side. What a chance. Right across. And it was just too far behind. Kevin Crow was going forward. Still scoreless, 10.50 to play in the opening quarter. Kevin uh, Crow making a good run, but well tracked down there, too. So that's something that Leokoski is going to be happy with uh, on the coach's bench. Armstrong fired it from long range, and that one almost snuck through. Now it's Dougherty. Told, won three straight games, last played in game seven against Kansas City, and a big win it was. Here's Karich over the line. Nice ball back, Hermes left footer wide. And normally he makes those count. Now it's DeFlorio. Hermes, by the way, getting a good uh, step on uh, Stolmeyer there. That's a little bit unusual. Right side, Mokalis. Back to Clavijo. Left wing now to Hermes. Juan Hermes at the line. Blocked by Schmetzer. Callis now to Clavijo. Right side, he wants Julie B. Desmond Armstrong now back to P.J. Johns. Johns holding it. Scoreless tie, 9.46 to go in the opening quarter, and it's knocked out of play. Knocked out of play, so we'll have a stoppage. Still scoreless, 9 minutes and 44 seconds to go. Seems like the best chances in this game, Seamus, have occurred uh, when it's given the goalkeeper a break and not getting a good shot. As we look at the Sockers, they're tough to beat anywhere, but how about here? They've only lost six times in 41 games. Well, I think there's a, a little bit of a mystique, too, about this building and all these banners hanging here. Reminds me of my uh, hometown of Boston in some ways. That's right. <laughs> McCallus. Uh, they're in some trouble, though, your hometown yes, they, Celtics, aren't they? Are. Uh, but uh, soccer's uh, obviously do intimidate uh, opponents when they come in here, and Cleveland uh, has really done quite well given that uh, given that history and that mystique. Clavillo will play it back now to Zoltan Toth. 2.94 goals against average during the regular season. That beat any previous record by a long margin. Up now to V. Julie V got a chance to knock it ahead to Perez. For Quinn broken up. Quinn and Mepham, two hard-nosed players go for it. Wow. On Brian Quinn of the Sockers. Well, a good challenge there by Dennis Mepham coming on Quinn. Quinn is such an experienced player. You can't allow him to have a ball. Oh, bad mistake there by Benny Dargo. Off the boards. Let's see how Dargo recovered it on his own. He had told for that mistake. Clavillo got a piece, I thought, of Schmetzer. Yeah. And that's what the call is. Three fouls. Good call. Up the left wing now, Valentine over the line. He's a threat. Valentine in the box. Back heel wide by DeFlorio. And Tope comes up with it. Looked like a great chance for Cleveland, but back on the soccer. Severinci. Brings it over the line. Right side to Perez. Right at P.J. Johns. He's looking quickly to start the offense. Up for Allen. Got it around Hermes, but then Hermes won the ball. Boy, Hermes took a big gamble there, and the ball uh, ran uh, favorably for him after his challenge. Good challenge by Mepham. Great ball won, and he shot it just wide. Those are the kind of challenges that can result in goals, and Mepham almost knocked it home himself. Hermes with it. 8.27 to go in the opening quarter. Scoreless. And Allen not just able to get that little touch on the shot by Mepham or in the previous opportunity, but uh, you saw at the top of the show how good he is at uh, converting chances from near in. Right side, Hermes to Perez. In the box, Perez scores! 1-0 soccer. P.J. John's unhappy, but these fans are not unhappy, but uh, not a very difficult shot, but the surprise, maybe, the surprising nature of it is what uh, fooled P.J. John's, as the wall seems to be went between his legs, but uh, Karras just got it on the turn, uh, as Perez comes forward here, throws it into Karras, and Karras just turns, 
Not a very hard shot, but goes right between the legs. So P.J. Johns has got to be pretty unhappy about that. Um, Schnetzer had done a reasonably good job uh, on uh, his man, but uh, we'll look at it again here and see how close Schnetzer was. Here's Perez, good touch. Yeah, Schnetzer's pretty close there. Maybe it could be a step closer, but it looked like a difficult situation indeed for Carries to be able to do much about, but uh, he scores at 6.52 from Perez. And Perez now ties himself along with Julie V and Juan Hermes as the leading scorers with 18 playoff points. Armstrong knocked away by Dougherty. Tabrizzi to the left wing, broken up by Armstrong, but a foul on the Cleveland force. It'll be their second. There are three on the Sockers. Quinn in play to Julie V. Right footer and a scribbler went wide. Armstrong almost looked like he was a little too careless in there. Went out of play. A corner kick coming up. Armstrong a little slow perhaps to react to that one. And it almost cost him. An official's time out on the floor. Sockers have the lead. One to nothing. Carrots the goal from Perez. We'll be coming back to San Diego. Stay with us. Budweiser and Bud Light join with USA Today to give baseball fans something new. Now for the first time, you can also pick up an official all-star fan ballot, free wherever you pick up Bud or Bud Light. Vote for your favorite Major League players. Then, test your talent for baseball trivia and win valuable prizes. Okay, maybe... Maybe not. You like this guy at third? How about this... Uh... <laughs> no, <laughs> Do you, uh, uh, uh. What National League catcher played 11 consecutive All-Star? Says here it was me. Johnny Bench! Hey, how you doing? Answers are in USA Today every day. So the fans everywhere settle back with a cold Bud or Bud Light. Vote for the players you want to see in the All-Star game and be part of a baseball tradition. Swing and a shot in a right center field may not be caught. A corner kick coming up when we return to the action. Soccer's leading at one to nothing. Carrich, the only goal of the game thus far from Perez at 6.52. They need a big game from Carrich. They really need the big game from him. Let's look at Kai Hoskovy, their best player on the floor the other night. We talked about character coming back, but they can't keep falling behind, says Captain Kai, as it's played back to P.J. Johns. On the right side, Armstrong. On the run at midfield. Right back to Hoskovy. Hoskovy so cool under pressure. Left side, Schmetzer. Andy Schmetzer, that is. By the way, Brian Schmetzer not playing tonight, not dressed for the game. Tabrizzi takes his spot. Ron Newman doesn't want to take a chance with his bad injury to the toe. Here comes Perez again over the line. Trying to cut back, and he and Stolmeyer, and they're going to call a foul on John Stolmeyer. And they're going to call for the trainer, Bill Taylor, to come out. So that means Perez will have to wait for the next guaranteed substitution. Yeah, I think he got back on. I think it seemed to me he got whacked across the knee there just uh, by the trailing defender. Let's take a look. Uh, is it Stolmeyer? Yes, yeah. it is Stolmeyer. Here's the watch the foot come across. Yes, he kicked him right in the shin, actually, not on the knee. So that shouldn't be as bad. Clavillo on the restart. Right across. Brian Quinn strikes it off the boards. He wants Crow, but he lost it. Now it's Stolmeyer. Crow will win it back. Quinn. Hold it. Right back to Kevin Crow in the neutral zone. One of the San Diego leading it. Now Quinn will knock it back. Crow to Quinn. They want the give and go. They get it, but it's not a good ball by Brian Quinn, who's normally steady there. Crow from Dougherty. Kevin Crow in the corner. Soccer still with a lead on the carrot goal from Perez. Brian Quinn takes on Schmetzer. This is the give and go. Quinn shot. Score, but there was a whistle. There was a whistle. No goal. Uh I thought he committed a handball, but uh, apparently not so. Well, if they've if, uh, taken away a goal, essentially, uh, it's a great give and go here. The Spencer can't recover in time, but I think it was Stolmar. Stolmar, the left of the screen, uh, committing the foul. Dougherty shooting it, blocked by Stolmar. Crow in the corner, blocked. That was a great shot of uh, that foul, actually, because I didn't see it when it first happened. I was surprised at the whistle, but I did hear the whistle long before the shot. Yeah, that's what made me think that Quinn handled the return ball because it, it controlled it so well. It was a wonderful touch by Quinn and a great finish. Sockers didn't argue much. Here's Valentine against two. Played it in the box. Nice idea for DeFlorio, but it doesn't get there. Stolmeyer, right side to Gino DeFlorio, now to Desmond Armstrong. And as he tried to tee it up in terms of a pass hard off the boards, 
it goes up on a play. Six minutes, 24 seconds left in the opening quarter, and the Soccer still have the early one goal lead. One of international golf's premier events, the Volvo British PGA Championship comes to score June 4th and 5th. This year's field includes Masters champion Sandy Lyle, Seve Ballesteros, Bernard Langer, Ian Woosnam, and Nick Faldo. So don't miss the third round on Saturday and the final round on Sunday. From London's historic Wentworth Golf Club, that's the Volvo British PGA Championship. Saturday, June 4th at 7 p.m. Eastern, and Sunday, June 5th at 6 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on score. Budweiser, the King of Beers, welcomes you back with our MISL Championship Flashback 1979. Young Bronco Segoda down the right wing, scores a goal against the Philadelphia Fever to help the New York Arrows become the first MISL champion way back in year one, 1979. See how young that uh, Steve Jungle and Bronco Segoda look there? Very different hairstyles yes. from the uh, current situation. Yeah. McCallis with the ball. We'll tell you it's a one of the San Diego lead. Unlike the other night, the Soccer scored first early, and they got the goal from Kerich, and Ron Newman was hoping that either Kerich or Ketter could do the job in place of the injured Sagoda, so that has to be a big lift to see Kerich get his first goal of the playoffs. He hasn't been playing since game three, actually. Valentine heads it up. Now Allen almost had it. Looked like he had that ball trapped, but couldn't quite get it. Here's Walt Schmetzer cutting. Left footer blocked by Mokalis. Lattisor won a great hustle from Lattisor. Two on two with Julie Lee. Lattisor to the corner. Still in control. Lifting it, he wanted to get Rotolo on for his first shift of the night. Good work, though, by Schmetzer to get back there. Walt Schmetzer did very, very well to track down Latissour. Ocalis dancing away, looking. He wanted Latissour. That's broken up. Walt Schmetzer in the box. Gives it right back to P.J. Johns. Long toss up the wing. Down the wing goes Valentine. Carl Valentine, nice cut to the right. It was blocked by Mokalis. May have saved the goal because Valentine, very good when he's got that opening. And uh, once again, Allen cruising through the middle, looking for the rebound, and didn't, uh, didn't bounce favorably for him. Walt Schmetzer back to P.J. Johns. Schmetzer getting a lot more playing time in the early going here with Casamani not dressed because of a bit of a groin problem. In the corner area, Hermes to V. Knocked it back in, but there's nobody there. One player that did not dress the other night for Cleveland will dress, Pasquale DeLuca's got the bad right ankle that will need surgery at the end of the season. But he is on the bench, and if Timo Leakowski chooses to use him, he's there. The other night he did not dress. And we've got George Fernandez down on the floor in the neutral zone, so play is stopped with 4.37 to go. Still in the opening quarter in San Diego with a one to nothing lead. Let's see what happens. Let's take a look here as uh, Dennis Methel comes forward, and you'll see the sliding tackle. Dangerous tackle going in with that left foot forward. Well, and uh, just gets kicked, kicked, some, gets kicked in the stomach there by Beffham as he came through. But the initial tackle was a very dangerous one indeed um, by Fernandez going down uh, like that, leading with the left foot. And, uh, you know, it just it, you're really opening yourself up to problems. What's ironic about this is that Ron Newman rolled the dice a little bit. He told us before the game he was not going to dress Brian Schmetzer because he felt his defenders were now getting back healthy. He thought McCallis was better. Clavillo was better, so he said, I'm going to use Tabrizzi as a defensive runner. Because of Schmetzer not being 100%, he didn't want to use Schmetzer in that role. He said, the only thing that could cost me is naturally if the defender goes down. And Fernandez is down early in this one at 437. So Bill Taylor, the trainer, trying to help him out. Yeah. Well, it, it, uh, I think he's going to be okay. And also we saw Perez earlier. You see there, going over the top, uh, he, he does make that sliding tackle, gives up the body, but... Uh, Mepham really didn't deliberately kick him there. He just arrived late, and uh, as he stepped over with one foot, the other foot just dragged through and caught him. I think Mepham was lucky, too, that he didn't get hurt on that. He's been injury-prone yeah. throughout his career, and uh, luckily he escaped it as well. A reminder that the series will be returning, or going, I should say, to Cleveland and then staying there for three games, but Sunday night at 7.30, we hope to see a good turnout out at the Richfield Coliseum. We welcome those viewers, by the way, watching the game on WOIO Channel 19 in Cleveland. There's George Fernandez. He's in some pain. We'll see if he returns to the action soon. Ooh, a dangerous ball given up there by P.J. Johns. Uh, well won in the end by Schmetzer. And here they come. The force leading it for Hoskaby. Crow back for it. Blasted up the boards. Hoskaby read it well. He was in great position. In for DeFlorio. Bad bounce there, and now it's kicked up. We've got a whistle and a foul. Pushing foul, yeah. On I, San Diego. Yeah, I thought Perez was guilty of a push there. He did clear it away on the volley. 
but he pushed first, so that's the fourth foul. I thought he may have had a high kick, but I didn't see that sign. Haskovy from the top of the arc because the foul in the box is not deemed flagrant enough for a penalty kick. 34 feet away, and he Ooh. almost scored. Great shot. Turn around, Andy Schmetzer sends it wide, but there's the danger of Haskovy. Stolmeyer, good move, shot, great good. save off the right hand of Coach. Haskovy a bomb, and it's blocked by Clavillo. Great action down there in the San Diego zone. Clavillo almost sat down to take that header. Uh, what a touch by Haskovy, though, there to win that ball back. No problem there for Coach on the Florio. Clavillo up now to Carriage. It starts to open up. Carriage to Clavillo. Couldn't get the step down. That time, DeFloria went right back with him. You remember the other night, Armstrong had a foul. That'll be five on San Diego. Did you see how quickly DeFloria came back on Clavillo? Here's a look at Desmond Armstrong. Their number one draft choice, University of Maryland, a couple years back. Made the All-Star squad this year in only his second season. That's quite an achievement. Stolmeyer in the wing. Over the line comes Stolmeyer. Shot is blocked, and Crow had a block. It's still loose. Allen wanting to turn. Craig Allen in the corner, picked up by Tabrizzi. Allen, good job to even stay with it, but now he lost it. B on it. Swings it right to Hermes. Haskovy positioned himself, trying to draw a six foul there. Now whistle. Uh, Instead of went on Cleveland. Uh, Haskovy a little upset there because he thought he was fouled uh, by Hermes as Hermes went to the board. You see him being knocked over like that. Uh, and then the foul, <laughs> uh, indeed, by Mepham as he crunches uh, Hermes against the board so that's uh five fouls apiece with three minutes to go so we could have a power play coming up before this uh quarter is over julie v holding on to it with has to be on him two of the great stars of the misl julie v over the line trying Oops. to cut mepham is yeah. that obstruction or not that is that's indeed. Six that's six. so has to be not pleased about that because he felt it should have been the other way on the previous play but let's take another look not much doubt about it. He cuts to the right, and Mepham uh, steps right in front of him. Surprising foul there by Dennis Mepham. Uh, kind of a silly foul, really, because I don't think V has the speed to get by Mepham. He could just have gently sort of nudged him with his shoulder or else just followed him into the corner. I don't think uh, there was much chance for Julie to do there, do much there. But now here's this vaunted penalty killing uh, uh, quartet, if you will, uh, of Cleveland, which has been very, very, very strong. So power play coming up here for the San Diego Sockers who are clicking 12 out of 44, 27.3%. On the opposite side of the force have killed it off at a rate of 75%. They were the number one team in the league during the regular season in penalty killing. As we watch Paul Kitson serving the penalty. Kitson at his first point of the season. He's been injured all year in the game on Wednesday night. Timo Leakoski concerned here. Hopes that his special teams have done the job all year. Can do it again. Quinn. In the corner to V, and he tried to slide it across. Good play by Dargo. Ryan Quinn now, right point. We've got Perez in the middle. V to the right. Gives it to Perez. Back to Quinn. Perez again. Toes into the corner. Hermes a bomb, and that's way wide. That was too hard for anyone to even deflect home. There's a look at the power plays that we gave you. Quinn, right out. Perez, free shot. Too high and wide. Lead pass up for Valentine. Quinn, great run from behind to coach up to him. But Valentine will eat up some time here. Oh, nice fake, but Perez was right there. Valentine almost split him. But they killed off about 15 seconds there. We're down to 122, but Perez with a free shot. Maybe too much time for him. Especially with that lethal left foot. Usually he's deadly accurate with that. Perez missed the shootout attempt the other night. Cuts left, gives to Dougherty. Shanked it. Dougherty plays it back on the left side to Hermes. Now to Perez. Sockers with 12 power play goals, the smallest guy out there. Dowdy has five of them, almost half. Now it's P.J. Johnson. The Dowdy told me before the game, he thinks it's his anticipation. He seems to know where that ball is going to be and gets there one step before the ball even gets there, he feels. He had 10 during the regular season and five right now. Perez with it. 44 seconds of the power play. Perez makes a look at the clock to Julie May. Right footer, tip wide. Benny Dargo may have saved the goal because the screen was set up in front. And now there'll be a kick in coming up here for the San Diego Soccer. So the force, who are so great on those special teams. Timo Leokoski, what he now. says about working on the special teams. We need to trap people down, and we need to get better play out of the back. And they did it all season long. Jay Hoffman, the assistant coach, handles those specialty teams for Cleveland. Michael King, 18 goals this year. What a nice season he had. One of the young talents on the force. 
Broken up, though, by Julie V. I saw that quote earlier in, in print, and I just want to correct one thing. It says track people down. What he does mean, of course, is track, track, track. T R A C K. Uh, that's what uh, I get for reading it. That's right. <laughs> well, no, it was uh, misquoted in the in the release that we saw of quotes, uh, but tracking down is very important. Ball played out now to Perez. 12 seconds left. Right side to Quinn. In the corner to Karich. Right out Perez. Four seconds of the power play. Right side to Quinn, a one of the soccer's lead. Karich plays it all well off the boards. And why Perez too high. Right side Karich, and that's too high as well. So San Diego, their own worst enemy there. They just couldn't seem to direct anything on goal. But I'll tell you, you got to give Cleveland the, the uh, credit there, Seamus, for pressuring and not giving him. I think Perez had the best chance when he had the open shot, and he missed it. But otherwise, they seem to put some good pressure on these players. Well, the Sockers indeed have owned Cleveland uh, this year with, as you see, four wins in regular season play, two here and two in Cleveland, and, of course, the one victory last Wednesday night. Uh, but in the power play situation, uh, Cleveland is very, very strong, especially in Cleveland, oh. where they're just uh, unbelievable. Uh, they haven't given up. I don't know how, when was the last time they gave up a goal in the, on the man down situation. Ball is played back to P.J. Johns, now with a Hoskovy. Kai Hoskovy. I was going to save that stat for uh, Sunday's game in Cleveland. Ball is played back now to P.J. Johns again. 37 seconds left in the opening quarter. Sockers with a one to nothing lead. But just like the other night, no one able to get that two-goal cushion. Latasur, right back for Zoltan Tov. 25 seconds left. Tov named the all-decade team in goal, along with Slovo Lievsky, the great goalkeeper for the St. Louis Steamers. We'll have something to say, too, about the Steamers franchise coming up a bit later on in our telecast. Apparently, there's some talks, positive talks aimed at a purchase of that team in St. Louis. Long ball played, and King straight up to win it for Hoskovy. Three seconds, two, the shot is blocked, cleared up by, Fer by Fernandez, and the good thing there for San Diego is that they never got the sixth foul. They went about three minutes and change with five fouls and never picked up that sixth, although Cleveland felt that they did at one point. Carrots the goal is first of the season of the playoffs from Perez at 652. That's your only score, San Diego leads. Scoreboard Incorporated, the only publicly owned baseball card distributor in the U.S., brings you the best way to participate in America's favorite hobby, baseball card collecting, with these two great baseball card collector kits. Leading off at $12.95 is the Budget Baseball Card Kit, featuring 75 modern baseball cards, 5 collector pages, 10 portable card holders, the Baseball Hobby Newsletter, the Sports Collector's Digest Price Guide, and Scoreboard's Illustrated Advice Book on buying, selling, and trading cards for fun or investment. If you think that's a lot, you heavy hitters out there can clean up with the all-star baseball card collecting kit. At $24.95, you get 150 modern baseball cards, 10 collector pages, 20 portable card holders, the book of baseball cards, the Sports Collector's Digest Price Guide, Baseball Hobby Newsletter, a baseball card memorabilia poster suitable for framing, and a handsome embossed finished professional baseball card album. Here's your chance to join in the excitement of baseball card collecting now by calling one 800 962 2962 Either way, you score with scoreboards collecting kits. Billboard's first, he said. Hey, it's legend. Now you can bring it all home with an exciting videotape book magazine offer. The tape is Pele, greatest sports legend. Highlights from the career of the most popular sports figure ever. The man who thrilled hundreds of millions of people around the world as he led Brazil to World Cup victory. The book is the World Cup. The entire history of the cup in text and pictures, including an in-depth analysis of America's role in cup play up through Spain 1982. The magazine is Soccer Digest, a full year of the number one soccer periodical in the country. Keep up to date with what's happening in the world of soccer with timely articles on American and international soccer, plus MISL statistics and player profiles. And if you order now, we will include the book Warm Up for Soccer. This package could cost you as much as $50, but now it's yours for only $34.95 in this special TV offer. Call 1-800-962-2962 and ask for soccer. Checks and credit cards accepted. That's 1-800-962-2962. Sorry, no CODs. Allow four to six weeks for delivery. The championship series is being brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Just what the doctor ordered. By Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza delivers hot, fresh baked pizza in 30 minutes or less. And by Turtle Wax, the number one selling car wax in the world. And here in game two, the San Diego Soccers lead by the score of one to nothing as Ron Newman talks to the troops. He's got to be happy about the first and only goal scored by Carriage. 
It was, and a pretty harmless looking piece of attacking play initially. Perez just sort of playing the ball into Carriage. Didn't look like much of a threat as he's running away from the goal. So he just takes a turning shot. Not very powerful, but when you're that close in, really only about uh, 10 feet away, it doesn't really matter how much power there's on it. In fact, if you miss hit it, sometimes it's going to fool the keeper more than if you hit it uh, straight and flush and true. Look at the turn here. And, uh, you know, it looked to me as though P.J. just took his eyes off the ball there. He did not have his eyes down to the ball, and uh, it went right between his hands, between his legs, and uh, an unhappy piece of goalkeeping uh, by P.J. Johns. But uh, that was the only goal of the first period, and Cleveland's got to feel reasonably happy because they killed uh, a power play situation, and they're only down by one. And uh, there's P.J., and he will, I'm sure, do better for them uh, than we saw in that particular replay. He's a key player for this fourth squad. One nothing, San Diego second quarter underway. Carriage heading it into the corner. It's Crow. Has to be on him. Crow and has to be two perennial all stars. Out to Brian Quinn. Holding it. DeFlorio with him. Brian Quinn looking for somebody to his left. There's nobody there. Now he'll chip it in. Carriage taken out by Stolmeyer. And it appeared to be a late whistle. But Stolmeyer guilty of the foul as he had been at Carriage. Carriage so dangerous in that position because he turns so well. Able to get off the shot with either foot. I've seen him do it several times this year. He scored some big goals for the soccer. 34 feet out. Played across and it's broken up. Stolmeyer, but Dougherty won it. And then Armstrong knocked it away. Desmond Armstrong coming back. Avoid the tackle from Clavijo, but there's Dougherty to win it. Soccer's turn it back. Clavijo over the line. Cutting to the outside, Stolmeyer slowed him down. Now it's Armstrong right back to P.J. Johns. Uh, good work by Armstrong there for most of his play. Made one bad mistake trying to squeeze a difficult ball to, through to DeFlorio, I think, who's on it now. But other than that, he did uh, he fought well and retreated well, which is what, uh, of course, the coaches are looking for on the Cleveland side for him. Ball played up the wing now. Tended for DeFlorio. Cleared out. Now it's Perez heading it down. Crow settles it with Haskovy on him. Carriage played back down to Zoltan Tolk. Tolk and Gorsik shared the spot this season in goal. They alternated pretty much the whole way through, except for injury. Fernandez over the line. Fernandez lost it in front of Stolmeyer. Played the body tough there. Quinn with it. Stolmeyer comes to play. Home game, road game, doesn't matter. He doesn't know the difference. Intensity plus for John Stolmeyer. Over the line is Perez. Perez and Stolmeyer actually teammates in the U.S. national team outdoors. Same with Crow, and Clavijo may end up there. The U.S. team is interested in at least seeing what Fernando, a new citizen, will be able to do. Carriage, left wing, stopping against DeFlorio. DeFlorio trying to concentrate there on defense. It's played in a Quinn off the boards, and there's DeFlorio on his man, but he lost the ball. Perez save. Another shot. Score! Hugo Perez! got to feel very, very unhappy about this goal because they looked like they had recovered this. It was not a dangerous situation in the end, but they did not make sure. There's the sort of miss hit by DeFlorio, then he knocks it away from his own keeper. A good save by Perez. DeFlorio still can't get it away, and eventually knocks it up past Haskovy. So really very sloppy and unhappy bounces in there. Sloppy play and some unhappy bounces for Cleveland, but uh, credit to Perez for persisting. Here he has the first chance, and he smacks it right into the keeper who does well, but he doesn't make a mistake the second time around. Nobody can close him down fast enough to Florio Hoskin. He can't do the job, and uh, Perez takes advantage for his 10th goal in the playoffs, and the Soccers lead 2-0 on two goals that Cleveland, I'm sure, will feel uh, shouldn't have happened. To Florio, the unfortunate part for him, he tracked his man down well. He just misplayed the ball. So last night, or Wednesday night, his problem was that he didn't do the tracking job. Right now, he was on his man. He just misplayed it. Perez will get credit for the goal. It is unassisted. Now it's Mokalis. Clearing it out, Latasur to Mokalis. Gus Mokalis holding it. Now to Julie V. Headed away by the force, Walt Schmetzer. This is the first time in the series, as we've got a foul called on San Diego. First time, Sheamus, in the series that either team is led by more than one goal. 
Uh, Cleveland's got to get their offense going. They've, uh, they've, they've really not. Pro oh, here's a chance Here for Allen. Allen the shot and oh. Colt is there. Well, that was the chance. Boy, McCollis really made a, a blunder there, allowing Allen to turn on him the way he did. And Allen, I should have thought, uh, JP, had a bread and butter kind of opportunity for himself there and uh, really didn't do very well with it at all. Here's a foul by McCollis. Gets another one like that, a problem connect easily. Here's Allen looking for it back with McCollis knocked it away. Into the air, Hermes and Valentine. Hermes knocks it away. Dargo back on the chip. Hermes against Walt Spencer. Oh, great job to trap it. Great job to even get anywhere near that ball by Hermes. And now it's Meppo for Benny Dargo. Two to nothing. San Diego leading over the Cleveland Force. Game three Sunday night at 7.30 in Richfield, Ohio. Valentine out to Meppo. Meppo on the right footer blocked by Julie V. To the far boards it goes for Hermes. Hermes blocked. Ball is kept in play. They're going to call a foul there on the Cleveland Force. Well, Hermes looked like he did his I, awful best to draw I that one. I think he sure did. He's a handsome guy. He's uh, <laughs> very popular around here. And uh, he's got a little bit of uh, panache and uh, took a little bit of a dive there, I think. Got away with it. Certainly he was hit hard by Schmetzer, but it didn't initially look like a bad foul. And he sort of turned it into looking like one. So the second foul for the Force, three already on the Sockers. I know there's a writer's strike, but some of the actors appear to be still working as it's shipped back the other way, and it goes beyond. Zoltan Colts reach. The San Diego Soccers have the lead. Two to nothing. 11-12 still to play in the second quarter. The Noid wants to make your pizza <laughs> ice cold. But Domino's pizza is hot and fresh. <laughs> because they deliver in less than 30 minutes. Sorry, Noid. Domino's pizza delivers hot and fresh. Financial News Network is the only place where you can keep an eye on your money throughout the business day. From before the opening bell to a comprehensive wrap-up on America's business, you can count on the people who know money at Financial News Network. Soccer's with a 2 nothing lead, but a corner kick opportunity coming up here for Cleveland. Kai Hoskaby out to Stolmar. Good save. Colt was right there. Long run for DeFlorio. Has to win that one all the way back to P.J. Johns. And now roll to the right side. John Stolmeyer, six playoff goals. An excellent playoff series thus far. Nice move, Hoskaby. Fernandez picked him up the second fake. And a foul drawn by Kai. He'll play it right across quickly. Off it goes to DeFlorio, back for Hoskaby. Hoskaby knows when to go for that quick restart, when to hold it, when to go the other direction. Here's his shot, blocked, out of play. And another free kick coming up. You can't relax if you're a defender when Hoskaby's anywhere near that ball, especially on these restarts. Well, I think they also want him to start uh, attacking more. They want Hoskaby to try to uh, get a couple of shots off and do some damage one-on-one. -on -one. He's been helping out with defense, obviously, and he's so good at going back and, and leading the attack from the back. But he's got to do something up front for them right now. They really need it. Plays it over now, and it goes to Stolmeyer over to Desmond Armstrong. Of course, have a lot of great young talent. Has to be a nice back here. The Florio couldn't get the shot away. His crow is right there. Back out to Captain Kai Hoskaby. Neutral zone. He'll hold it against Fernandez. Former teammates when Fernandez was a top draft choice of the force a few years back. Right side, Stolmeyer from Andy Schmetzer. And now it is Desmond Armstrong leaving it off for Andy Schmetzer. Up the wing now to Florio. Good pressure by San Diego. They've got two players on the ball. Fernandez and Latasura, they'll win it. Tabrizzi knocks it back to Brian Quinn. Quinn kicked by DeFlorio and a foul on the force. It'll be their third or second. Nope, now they've put it up there. It is their third. Four on San Diego. Ball knocked back by Fernandez to Tote. Over to Kevin Crow. Uh, and now to Clavijo. Yeah, excuse me, Jamie. The offensive chemistry still isn't there for Cleveland. They really are not clicking on all cylinders up front. The combinations aren't there. There's a lot of individualism, and the ball is not rolling well for them. Well, there's roll for them. But by and large, uh, they've not, uh, they just have, have not looked sharp. Allen had the one great chance, perhaps the best chance for any for either team. And when they desperately needed him to convert, uh, he just uh, hit it harmlessly into, uh, harmlessly into the keeper's arms. So it comes up with that before Stolmar, and now it's Clavijo. Left side for Zoran Kerich. And we've got a kicking foul on oh. John Stomar. That's oh. not a good one because Carrots can't hurt you from that deep, and that's going to be the fourth foul on the force. 
So from two fouls, they've doubled it in the last minute. Of course, the least penalized team in the MISL. That's right. That, despite having a very, very young team where you would think they might be uh, likely to make mistakes or perhaps a little bit less discipline. But I mentioned this to Timo Lukasi before the game, and he said, no, uh, they have just uh, made a point of of saying let's not uh, get silly penalties uh, but on the other hand our penalty killing is so good that it doesn't worry us if we're down there Terrence knocking it back Perez and Valentine in a collision Perez getting by Hugo Perez over the line he's got one goal already he's 11th of the playoffs Hugo Perez fakes with his left leaves it off rolls it all off the post rebound Terrence and Johns is there but a handball on San Diego I don't think Rothalo expected that drop pass if he's there, one more step ahead, it might be a goal. Oh, a good shot, indeed. Look at this. Nicely left, and Ruotolo, surprising shot with the outside of the left foot. Surprised everybody, including his own teammates, uh, one of whom handled it uh, when the rebound came out. Back in the live action, Allen with a chance at the top of the box, and McCallis blocked it. In the corner for Walt Schmetzer, bumped by Carriage. What a tussle that is. And a hold on Schmetzer, and again, that's not a good foul for Cleveland. That's... Uh, five fouls on them and you can't get fouls that deep there not at this stage of the game now a deflection and Allen a scribbler wide rebound kicked up by Perez San Diego set the table that time for Cleveland that's a sixth foul well we'll sort it out when we come back there's 759 to go here in the second quarter the Sockers have the two nothing lead but they almost gave away an easy goal looking for something different Today we're just, we're just bringing, bringing my family a little bit closer. I think you've seen it all. Oh, wait a second. You want me to do the question like this, Joe? Fine. Know all the answers? Now, does Ted Turner watch this program? Well, you just might be ready for America's most technologically advanced game show, Time Out for Trivia. Only Time Out for Trivia lets you at home be the contestant and win valuable prizes. Sports trivia at its best. Join me, Todd Donahoe, the commissioner, for Time Out for Trivia on FNN Score. For complete up-to-the-minute business news, there's only one cable channel, the Financial News Network. For the latest on the markets, how to reduce your taxes, or tips on getting the best mortgage rates, watch the Financial News Network. Every business day, FNN delivers the latest news and information you need to make the right investment decisions. FNN's regular features help you spend wisely and save effectively. To shape your financial future, keep an eye on your money with the Financial News Network. Well, we're back in San Diego. We're going to take a look at this play a minute ago. It's a nice steal in there, but look at this chance again for Allen, and he just rushed his shot, comes off the boards. A little bit of pushing in there. Allen has a chance for it again, and it is just uh, knocked away. So that's what the whistle is for, clearing the ball intentionally into the stands. Uh, and that's uh, not a foul. I thought it was a six-foul count initially just before the break, but not so. So it's five fouls on each club. The next mistake will cost either side. Restart a free kick for 34 feet out. Haskaby plays it in near side. It's blocked by Tolkov. Andy Schmetzer. DeFlorio with it. Try to turn back and he got burnt. Three on two. Tabrizzi over the line. Top of the arc. Plays it on the left. Here's Hermes right across. And misses is McCallis. Pass a little too high in the air for him to deflect easily. And now DeFlorio comes back and he's going to be breathing a very deep sigh of relief there. And that's the sixth foul. And Juan Hermes, so Cleveland with a great chance on the power play to get themselves back in the game. And maybe, Seamus, that's what the doctor ordered for them. Although last night on their first power play, they gave up a shorthanded goal as we watch again what transpired that led to that six foul. Yes, uh, again, not a very disciplined challenge in here by Hermes who reaches in and just simply follows through. And that's a bad six foul. But with seven and a half minutes to go, it was pretty hard to avoid it. Well, here's the last uh, flurry. A three against two situation, and you'll see that the pass played nicely through to, uh, over here to Mokalis, who can't just reach to knock it in. It's an excellent ball played through there through a screen of players, but uh, there's Doherty. He's going to be sitting down. We haven't seen much of, that, of him, actually, in the second period. He's been, I don't know if he's been out at all. Ball is played on the left-wing side. Now to Haskaby. Well, he's so small, we may not have noticed him. Valentine with it. Only 5-2, smallest athlete of any organized team sport. Far side, now it's Stomar, though this new World Basketball League may have us in that. On the left side, it's played across by Allen. Hoskins right across, and Clavijo is there. Right side to Quinn, watch out for Clavijo, shorthanded. He's got 13 career goals in the regular season in that department. Brian Quinn with it. Knocks it back to Fernandez. 
All the way back for Zoltan Tilt, 6.54 to go in the second. It's 2-0 San Diego. Zoltan Tilt wants a timeout with a minute 17 to go here on the power play. An interesting timeout here by San Diego. So they'll have a chance to talk things over. Maybe Ron Newman saw something that he wasn't too fond of. 2-0 Sockers with the lead. It's time for lifestyles of the original party animal with the grand poobar of partyometry, Bud Light's own Spud McKenzie, as he's planning tonight's big bash. His fans watch as he tans his way to party elegance. A facial and massage, and Spud McKenzie is ready to party. And Spud's parties with only Bud Light. He knows everything else is just the light. San Diego with the lead of 2 nothing. Watch how dangerous Clavijo is after he wins the ball. Look at the speed. Now, nothing's going to happen here. He's not going to get the ball, but watch how fast he blows past Valentine down the wing, and he's only at maybe half speed. He hasn't turned it up to full notch. If there's a faster player than Fernando Clavijo in a major indoor soccer league, no coach, no general manager, no player has yet to identify him. And you've always got to respect that speed. I think it's more of a weapon, Seamus, with Clavijo coming out of the back with some forwards. Uh, speed has really helped him a lot in this league, but Clavillo, if you never think of converting him, I think it'd be a big mistake because he's so effective with those great runs from the back area. Yeah, he is indeed. He's a tremendous threat. Uh, and as we saw from the overtime goal that we showed to you at the very beginning of this game, he also uh, knows how to bury that ball in the net when he gets a chance. I'm, uh, this is uh, a power play situation now and, uh, with one minute. And 17 seconds to go, a sixth foul situation. You see Dougherty over there waiting to come out, but he's got to sit a little bit longer. And I think, uh, I'm not so sure that Toth didn't call that uh, timeout because he took a look upfield and saw everybody marked tightly and was afraid to give it away and uh, create a situation that would have been uh, pretty threatening. But uh, who knows? It's, uh, he could have lost it on the five-second possession rule. So maybe that was it. So I don't know. I assume it maybe came from the bench, but possibly not. Allen, right side to Stolmeyer. 105 for the forks of the power play. Carl Valentine, right side to Stolmeyer. With four power play goals, he leads the team off the boards. It's blocked. Has to be off the boards again. Stolmeyer, Quinn on the run after it. And now Julie V as well on a penalty killing roll for San Diego. Played into the corner now to Craig Allen. 2 0 San Diego. Force need a goal to get themselves back in or get that confidence going. In the corner, it's has to be right across. Blocked wide. Quinn looked like he was the one that got the foot out. Craig Allen again. Runs himself into a tight spot. Hoscovy will clear it, but it's off a deflection. All the way back to midfield. Carl Valentine. Good job to reverse it. Let the ball do the work for him. That uh, saved him some valuable time. Valentine from Stolmeyer. Pushing it outside. Fernandez with him. And with him too much. Foul in San Diego. Valentine of the restart. Free kick here. And towards the box, has to be out to Valentine. Right across, just missing the foil. Good idea by Valentine, but they missed the connection. Crow, Quinn got behind his man, Stolmar, who made a nice block. And a foul call on San Diego. Quinn was off to the races if Stolmar doesn't block that. Ten seconds of the power play. Hoskins, step over move. Cuts it back, Valentine, left footer. Blocked in front by Crow. Chip, Clavillo, behind Valentine. Now Valentine will catch up. Clavillo's shot is blocked. Clavillo didn't have a chance once he got by because of the way that ball was. Crow and it's blocked back to P.J. Johns, but there's that speed we talked about. If Fernando gets that ball better in front of him, there's no one that's going to catch him. And another whistle as that ball goes out of play on the near side. Yeah, a strange distribution there by P.J. Johns. Uh, once again, getting the ball wide to the boards with uh, not even a 50-50 chance, I think, for a player to come up with it. Uh, so you do depend a great deal on your goalkeeper to do things. Uh, there is uh, the master and the youngster talking about talking things over, or talk, one talking, one listening. Here you see the ball coming out. Now there's really nobody there. Uh, as I said, a 50-50 chance for Allen at best, but there are two defenders over there, so not quite sure exactly what P.J. Johns had in mind, except just to, to get the ball upfield. Mepham going long, it's headed away. Dougherty will get it now to Fernandez. A 2-0 Soccer's League, 5-14 to play in this second quarter. Game two of our best of seven championship series. Last year was won by the Dallas sidekicks led by the great tattoo. And we're all hopeful that tattoo makes the great comeback next season. We really missed him this season in the MISL. Ball played it out of carrots and he couldn't control it or he walks in. Meppa 
Blocked by Hermes to Karras. A chance again. Hermes right back. Karras goes down. Play continues, and Johns came up with it. Boy. A lot of second guessing, I think, as to who took the shots and who didn't there. Michael King, great tackle for Nandon. For Karras to juggle a bend and play on to the official. Kitson blocked by McCallum. Kitson and Hermes bang after it. Loose ball on the wing. Hermes. Watt had a great chance to shoot earlier. And for a guy that scored so many goals and had a great season, I got to wonder why he didn't take it. Meppo. Very good call by the referee there. He saw the he saw the high elbow. The fans didn't see it, or if they did, they didn't want to know about it. But excellent call. Michael King. Kitson. Try to cut it back. Knocked away and another whistle. And it's getting rough down there. Yeah, it's getting very dodgy at the moment. 4.06 to go. And the fur is starting to fly. The tenth foul of the period on San Diego. Great kick from near that top of the arc. Cleveland needs a goal here. 4.06 left in the second. It's a 2 nothing lead for San Diego. Dargo across. DeLuca, his first shift, broke it up. Savrici went down, and DeLuca fouled. He may have been compensating there. That's a six. On Cleveland, DeLuca may have been compensating for that bad ankle, maybe feeling he couldn't get back in time. Well, however, it's, an, again, an, un, an unhappy foul, a reach-in in a dangerous situation. You know, that anxiety to win the ball back, the, the emotion of the game going against Cleveland, desperately trying to get into it, getting very physical, hoping to try to pressure San Diego into mistakes. They've made enough mistakes in their own end to have given up three, or, uh, three four, five goals. And uh, as a result, of course, they make the mistake again. Another mistake by Cleveland this time, the sixth foul situation. So they got to try to kill another penalty. Oh, we've still yet to see the real San Diego, but likewise, we've yet to see the real Cleveland. I think you're right. We have not seen the best of either of these two teams by a long shot. And maybe it's just because they neutralize each other. I mean, that's a possibility. The best, hopefully, is yet to come. And I tell you, one of the tough things, these teams don't know each other all that well. They've played only four times during the regular season because of the different divisions. They've never played against each other in the playoffs. And actually, when San Diego met Cleveland, Cleveland had all kinds of injury problems. Right side, Brian Quinn on the power play. Going long for V. Kicked up by Stolmeyer. Off the glass, it's got a good lucky break there for San Diego. Brian Quinn over the line to Hermes. Back to Quinn. Right side again, Hermes in the corner. Off the board. Block, Benny Dargo. May have saved it there with John trying to move in a position. He had to be worried about an awful lot of things in there, but Dargo looked like he made a very nice play. Uh, this is a critical situation in this game now with goals very hard to get, at least so far. A 3 nothing lead uh, for San Diego would really be tough to overcome. Hermes out to Quinn. A shot blocked. Dennis Meppham with a good block. Quinn back to almost get there in time. He does win it eventually for Perez. 127 on the power play. It'll be interesting to get comments from the coaches when this half is over. We'll talk with Timo, Leah Koski at the end of this half, and Ron Newman at the start of the third. Perez shot. Oh, Ooh. that was it right there. That ball had goal written all over it. Now it's Quinn. In the Dougherty. Top of the arc. Broken up by Valentine. 3.08 to go. First half. 2 nothing San Diego lead. First and only time in this brief series thus far that either side is led by more than one goal. Dargle with a soft touch, but that'll kill some time. Down to 54 seconds of the power play. Perez. Left side, Julie B. Lifting it long, Hermes heads it down for Quinn. Quinn settles it, cuts to the left, plays it for V. In for Dougherty on the soft touch. Knocked back to Perez, 35 seconds. Soccer's on the move. Perez, a drive, and it's blocked straight up by Valentine. Kept in play. Oh, Julie B, smart play on a header out to Quinn to maintain possession and not lose time. Shot blocked by Meppham. Perez after it, knocking it back out. Valentine right on him tight. They don't call a foul. They want to let play on, say the officials. Right side, Quinn. To B, slides it. Hermes shot off the crossbar. Top part of that crossbar where it meets the post. Right at the angle, Quinn. To Hermes. Left footer off the boards on the pass and gets away. Quinn looking to settle. To Perez. Penalty's over. Around the boards, B looking for Dowry and Stolmeyer in there with a good play. Stolmeyer trying to come back. 
And whistle on the foul on San Diego. That's their 11th foul. 1.55 to go in the first half of play. And it's a 2-0 lead for San Diego. As Seamus Fallon heads for downstairs where he'll chat with Timo Leokoski, the Cleveland Force head coach, at the end of the second quarter. Only Ken Cooper has won more games in the MISL than Timo Leokoski won his 200th regular season game last time they played Dallas during the regular season. Ball played into Kitson. 133 to go. Haskovic, 2 nothing lead. The other way in San Diego on the advantage. Off the boards, Kitson ahead header off the post. Unlucky for Kitson. Off the boards the other way, Crow looking to settle it down. Soccer's are one foul away from another penalty. They've got 11. 114 left here. Kitson could have had a nice goal there. Perez leads it into space. Great run. Fernandez shot off the fingertips of P.J. Johns. That's probably P.J.'s best save of the opening half of play. So P.J. Johns sharp right there. But the fans sensing something here are on their feet. Kitson had a great chance, though, to pull Cleveland within one before the half off the boards. Look where he is. The header told, looked like he got it off his hand and then off the post. And then on the opposite side of San Diego comes down the floor. A great run by Fernandez, but how about the great ball Perez delivers in the space? There's the shot. Well taken, well struck. Great save, P.J. Johns. Looking none the worse for wear there. Just another day at the office for P.J. Seven saves thus far tonight. Taking charge, positioning his players. Restart from the near wing side. The corner kick spot with a minute three to go in the first half. 2 nothing San Diego shutting out the force in the opening half. Quinn to Carriage and watch out, spectators. That one wasn't close to anything. 11 fouls on San Diego, as we mentioned. One more, and they'll be in the box and six the other way. But Cleveland's penalty killers again did the job when they had to there. Timo Leokoski. Has to be happier with that effort than last night when they gave up a shorthanded goal on their very first attempt, something they don't normally do. P.J. Johns, a bit of an equipment adjustment straightened out. Now he'll give it up to Desmond Armstrong. Armstrong right back to P.J. Johns. A lot of things coming up at halftime. We hope you'll stick around for it. We'll be talking about some award winners, some highlights, and both coaches before we start play in the third quarter. There's DeLuca after the ball. He had his best season despite an ankle injury that actually happened last January, a year ago January. He played all of this year on it, and then it just got worse. Ball knocked away into the corner. Tote kicking it straight out towards midfield and over the line. Off the glass it goes. 29 seconds remaining in the first half of play. It's a well-dressed Ron Newman. I wonder what time that tuxedo has to go back. Or maybe it's not a rental. We'll see if it goes to Cleveland on Sunday for game number three. We welcome our Force fans watching this game on the TV home of the Cleveland Force, WOIO, Channel 19 in the Cleveland area. Ball played up now to Allen. Knocked away by Crow. Perez. Oh, nice recovery. Craig Allen on it. Allen, the kind of guy that could draw that sixth foul if he takes the player on. Now plays it back to Hoskovy, who can do likewise or put the ball in a threatening situation. Into the corner for Armstrong. He and Tabrizia there. Off the boards. Andy Schmetzer. Perez coming in, trying to win it. Got a piece, but there's Hoskovy. Oh, great control along the boards. Kai plays it across with two seconds left, and the four simply run out of time. Well, despite their efforts to keep possession and get a legitimate chance on goal, they come up empty there as the clock ran out on them. But they're on their feet here in San Diego. They're happy that the Sockers have a 2 nothing lead. They'd probably like it to be more because the way games have gone this season in the MISL, especially the playoffs, no one is walking away from this game when it's just a 2 nothing lead. Goal scorers in this one as we watch the Sockers walk off the floor. Carriage first of the playoffs from Perez at 6.52, and then Perez unassisted his 11th of the playoffs at the two-minute mark. So Perez picking up where basically Segoda left off. Segoda the main threat on this club, but he's out for the rest of the playoffs because of a separated left shoulder. At the end of the first half of play, it's the San Diego Sockers leading it. By the score of 2 to nothing, all the action here at the San Diego Sports Arena will continue in a moment. Basketball at its best. Dr. J, Jerry West, Wilt, and Bill Russell. Catch the best in basketball with this great sports package offer. 
This basketball legends package features the greatest basketball players of all time on four videotapes. You'll see the incomparable Dr. J, Julius Irving, the man who transformed the game with an electrifying arsenal of offensive weapons. You'll meet the incredible Jerry West. Drafted by the Lakers in 1960, West scored close to 30,000 points in his career. And Wilt the Stoke Chamberlain, the most dominant player ever to step on a basketball court. You'll also get this Bill Russell video. The bearded wonder was the greatest defensive player in NBA history. The retail value of these great tapes is nearly $100, but we'll send them to you for just $59.95. And if you order now, we'll also send you this Kareem Abdul-Jabbar video, the greatest basketball player of all time. That's right, five exciting videos, just $59.95. Call 1-800-962-2962 and order your Basketball Legends package today. Pursue the Pennant is a baseball fan's dream come true. The Detroit Free Press says Pursue the Pennant makes other games look like the minor leagues. You'll get features that no other game can match. Full rosters for every team. Nearly 800 player cards for the 1987 season. Plus 26 full-color ballparks. That's Fenway Park right there. The Milwaukee Journal says it's the most lifelike, most enjoyable baseball game yet devised. The baseball equivalent to Monopoly. The board game was recently advertised in magazines for $44.95. But through this special TV offer, you get it for just $29.95. You can also order the computer game for your IBM personal computer or compatible computer for only $49.95. You'll save $20. It's the ultimate baseball experience. It even keeps your stats for you. See why the Sporting News calls Pursue the Pennant the perfect gift for Mr. Baseball. To begin your own pennant race, call 1-800-962-2962 now and ask for Pursue the Pennant. Checks and credit cards are accepted. That's 1-800-962-2962. Well, back here in San Diego, the Sockers have jumped out to a 2-0 lead. A lead, I might say, that uh, is maybe not too surprising indeed, because San Diego has taken advantage of some opportunities. On the other hand, if you're a Cleveland fan, you might suggest that the Cleveland Force has presented them with some great chances. I think that's probably quite true. They have presented uh, San Diego with some chances, and San Diego has knocked in two of them. On the other hand, only in the last five minutes of the second period did we begin to see some hustle and enthusiastic attacking play by Cleveland, they had done some nice uh, touching and some good passing up front, but they really hadn't gotten, uh, they really had not gotten much in the way of forceful attack going until uh, they started to tackle hard and force it around. Unfortunately, what that meant for them was a penalty. So the penalties have hurt them. They haven't given up goals on penalties, but they really have lost their rhythm a bit. Now, they don't worry about killing penalties. On the other hand, they want to have five against five, as you heard the coach say before the game. They want to have five against five and not just simply trying to be killing penalties all the time. So what must Cleveland do? They've got to gain their, regain the composure that has eluded them so far in this uh, first uh, one and a half games and try to put some more offensive opportunities together at the other end. Um, we're going to see if they can do that, but in the meantime, we're going to go back upstairs uh, to JP for some other halftime activities. Thank you very much, Seamus, and because of all your good work, we're going to present you with this trophy, actually. Thanks a lot for filling in downstairs for us. We have here as our special guest, Bill Tulaney, who is the Vice President of Marketing with Dr. Pepper, one of the new sponsors that we're happy to have on board the MISL this season. And Bill, before we talk about the trophy itself, let's talk about the involvement with Dr. Pepper. I know you've been involved because of your association in Dallas with the Sidekicks. That's correct. We've been a sponsor with the Dallas Sidekicks for four years, all four of their years since their inception in the league. And it's been a real love affair with both the sidekicks and Dallas, where it's our home for Dr. Pepper. So we're delighted uh, to be there with Dallas, and obviously we've made the jump this year to the whole MISL. Am I correct, if my memory serves me right, in uh, thinking that it was Kenny Cooper who was the first guy that endorsed Dr. Pepper back in the NASL with Dallas? That's correct. Back in the 70s when Kenny was goalkeeper for the Tornado, Kenny was a spokesperson for Dr. Pepper. All right, Bill, let's talk about this particular trophy, and a beautiful one it is. It's the first time that Dr. Pepper's been involved on the league level, and it was going to go out to the Dr. Pepper scoring champion. We had it presented, I guess, in absentia yesterday to the rightful winner, but I'll let you handle the honors for that. That's correct. We're presenting it to Eric Rasmussen of the Wichita Wings. Eric had an outstanding season that uh, encompassed uh, 55 goals, 57 assists, 112 points, which was his personal record. It also said about a half a dozen Wings records up there on his accomplishments for the season, which included uh, most assists in a game that he had for five, most assists in a season, 57, his goals, most points, uh, power play goals in a season, 16, which he tied for the league this year. Also, he set a record for the shortest time in a hat trick, which was four minutes and 16 seconds, which was a Wings record. 
and it was just an overall outstanding season for Eric, and we're delighted to be able to present this to him. We will do it personally to Eric when the season opens in Wichita in the fall. And we're hoping that the season will open without any problems in Wichita. We're hearing great things here. They're up to 5,600 season tickets, so keep up the good work, Wings fans, because uh, they're trying to save that club. That'll be nice. Tell us what the future is going to be with Dr. Pepper, because I know you guys came on board late. We're hoping to see how it would develop and then go from there, and hopefully we can get you for some more. That's correct. Well, we, we hope to be in it next year, and we want to see the league. This is a critical year for the league, obviously. Sure. And uh, it's probably uh, as bad as it may have seemed for a lot of the teams and the players with the salary cap and the uncertainties about the league. It's probably the healthiest thing that could have happened because it really gives the league and every team the opportunity to really set its door straight and open healthy for next season. And as long as those teams will do it, we'll be there. You had to be proud of the job in Dallas, especially last year when you guys got involved and they came from out of nowhere. Third place finish, they end up winning the championship. And, and it really carried over into this year. And I think had Tattoo been there, things might have been even better. Right. It was a miracle season for Dallas. There's no doubt about it. Bill Pelaney, our guest with Dr. Pepper. Stay with us. The action will be continuing from the San Diego Sports Arena, where at halftime, San Diego leads it 2 to nothing. Football games are won or lost by technique. Now, for the first time ever, Coach's Video Network is offering your son an opportunity to learn winning techniques from the nation's top college coaches with these unique videotapes, which feature coaches from Nebraska, Notre Dame, Baylor, Louisiana State, Louisville, the University of Oklahoma, Clemson, Arkansas, and UCLA. Each tape focuses on one key position and breaks it down, covering basic techniques, advanced creative moves, and important mental aspects of the game. These tapes were designed to help your son become a better athlete and more effective at his position. What better gift can you give your son than the chance to learn from the experience of these major college coaches? Choose from defensive middle guard, defensive ends, strength training, receivers, quarterbacks, offensive line, the defensive secondary, linebackers, offensive backs, or the mental game. Whether the football season is beginning or has started to wind down, your son's future is just starting. Videotapes from Coach's Video Network are an investment in his future. Call 1-800-962-2962 for your Coach's Videotape. Order today and let college's great coaches teach you. That's 1-800-962-2962. Don't miss this great offer. Don't delay. Call 1-800-962-2962. The Noid wants to make your pizza ice cold. But Domino's Pizza is hot and fresh. Because they deliver in less than 30 minutes. Sorry, Noid. Domino's Pizza delivers hot and fresh. Financial News Network is the only place where you can keep an eye on your money throughout the business day. From before the opening bell to a comprehensive wrap-up on America's business, you can count on the people who know money at Financial News Network. Welcome back here at halftime at the San Diego Sports Arena. The San Diego Soccers are leading it. A low-scoring game. They're shutting out the force by the score of 2 to nothing. Let's take it downstairs to Seamus Fallon and a look at all the first-half highlights. Seamus? Well, the first-half highlights from the scoring point of view were pretty uh, few and far between. This was the first goal, which came at 6.52 of the first period. Perez just striding forward, gently plays it to Carriage, who maybe uh, surprised everybody with a short, a short uh, turn and a quick shot that didn't have a lot of pace on it, but beats Metzer, his covering defender and more importantly beat P.J. John. So indeed, that was uh, a, a misfortune uh, for Cleveland, as P.J. has got to be a little bit unhappy about that. Well, if he's unhappy about that, he's even more unhappy about this, because this was the goal to put him two down, um, as it's played across, and there's a scramble in front. Uh, De Florio steps over it, then knocks it away, inadvertently from his own keeper. Perez thinks uh, he's got a chance. He knocks it in and doesn't go. He takes another chance and squeezes it between two players. Uh, has to be once again back in defense, but not able to stop it as this man Perez having assisted on goal number one, knocks in goal number two, and that's where we stand at two goals to nothing uh, for San Diego. But it could have been worse, and so maybe that's the only consolation that uh, Cleveland has at this point because they've offered not much in the way of attack at the other end. Here is a flurry around the penalty area uh, just with about two minutes to go in the first half. Uh, bodies flying all over the place. Mepham trying to get it away. Uh, San Diego players on the ground, and then Doherty comes in, kicks it away from both of them, but uh, fortunately, indeed, for Cleveland, P.J. Johns is in the right spot, 
Doherty can't believe that one didn't squeak through. Um, and the Cleveland fans are delirious that it didn't because it would have really nailed, uh, I think, the coffin right there. Here's another look. Uh, everybody in total chaos here. Bodies falling all about. And Mepham uh, looking like he had it, but then Doherty's squeezing it through. And P.J. Johns this time not about to give up another bad goal. And I think you, if you're a Cleveland fan, you have to say the goals weren't bad. If you were San Diego, you shrug your shoulders and say, who cares? Uh, they all count. And uh, there were better ones and better chances indeed that they did have it, didn't score, and the big chance uh, for Craig Allen that he didn't put away. Okay, we're going to have some more halftime activities for you. So let's go back upstairs to JP. Thanks, Seamus. It's a 2 nothing lead here for the San Diego Soccer. It goes by Carriage and Perez Force yet to score. The Noi wants to make your pizza <laughs> ice cold. But Domino's pizza is hot and fresh. <laughs> because they deliver in less than 30 minutes. Sorry, Lloyd. Domino's Pizza delivers hot and fresh. Financial News Network is the only place where you can keep an eye on your money throughout the business day. From before the opening bell to a comprehensive wrap-up on America's business, you can count on the people who know money at Financial News Network. Now you can take your car to the car wash or take the car wash to your car. The Zipwax Hydro System from Turtle Wax. The easiest way to give your car a turtle wax shine. The Zip Wax Hydro System from Turtle Wax. I love keeping my car shiny, so I switched to ClearGuard Protectant. It's from Turtle Wax. You know Armor All is mostly water, but ClearGuard's all shine. Now I hear they've got tests that prove it, but here's all the proof I need. ClearGuard shines better, shines longer. Scoreboard Incorporated, the only publicly owned baseball card distributor in the U.S., brings you the best way to participate in America's favorite hobby, baseball card collecting, with these two great baseball card collector kits. Leading off at $12.95 is the Budget Baseball Card Kit, featuring 75 modern baseball cards, 5 collector pages, 10 portable card holders, the Baseball Hobby Newsletter, the Sports Collector's Digest Price Guide, and Scoreboard's Illustrated Advice Book on buying, selling, and trading cards for fun or investment. If you think that's a lot, you heavy hitters out there can clean up with the all-star baseball card collecting kit. At $24.95, you get 150 modern baseball cards, 10 collector pages, 20 portable card holders, the book of baseball cards, the Sports Collector's Digest Price Guide, Baseball Hobby Newsletter, a baseball card memorabilia poster suitable for framing, and a handsome embossed finished professional baseball card album. Here's your chance to join in the excitement of baseball card collecting now by calling 1-800-962-2962. Either way, you score with scoreboards collecting kits. Game two of the championship series is being brought to you by Dr. Pepper, just what the doctor ordered. By Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza delivers hot, fresh baked pizza in 30 minutes or less. And by Turtle Wax, the number one selling car wax in the world. Here at halftime, it's a 2 to nothing lead for the San Diego Soccers. Goals by Carrots is first of the year for Perez. And then Perez is 11th of the year unassisted right at the two-minute mark. Cleveland has 11 shots at San Diego with 12. But Cleveland has yet to dent the nets occupied by goalkeeper Zoltan Toad. So there's your information here at halftime with the Soccers leading it by the score of 2 nothing. Let's talk to the architect of the five-time indoor champions, Ron Newman. Seamus Mallon is standing by with the coach. Well, here, here's Ron Newman, and he's got a 2 nothing lead. But, Ron, i got to say, this is yet another one of these strange games. Yeah, I don't think we're making enough, enough of our chances, really, Seamus. So I'm a little disappointed we haven't scored on our power play. We hit the inside of the post from Waddy, the one that we were trying to set up. Um, so we're only inches away. But uh, still, it's 2 nothing. If we can keep a, the big zero on our, on our side, then uh, obviously we'll be quite happy. Time starts to become our, in our favor. Well, that's, uh, that's the other factor, defense. Obviously, you wanted to get a good defensive performance. You've gotten it so far. They really have had only one good opportunity. Uh, are you doing anything unusual tonight? Uh, did you pick up people to close down? No, I think, uh, yeah, I think we've got a little bit better defensive attitude, but um, uh, mainly we're doing exactly the same thing. I'm doing a little bit better tonight. Okay, that's Coach Ron Newman. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here. Just before the start of the third quarter, we're going to rejoin JP up top. Thank you, Seamus. Right now, let's talk about our Gatorade Goalkeeper of the Year because that's what they're going to be talking about down below. Zoltan Toth was the clear winner. Look at that record. 21 and 6, but the average was the most impressive at 2.94. No one in the history of the MISL had an average of under three goals a game until Zoltan Toth took things over and took charge this season, coming in at 2.94. Let's go downstairs to the center of the field for the actual presentation to Zoltan. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to midfield for a special presentation. This season, Sultan Tok became the first goalkeeper in MISL history to register a sub three goals against average. Tonight, he's being presented the coveted Gatorade Goalkeeper of the Year Award. Here's Gatorade Southern California Territory Manager Brian Smith to present the award. present the 1988 Gatorade Goalkeeper of the Year Award to Zolan Toth. Ladies and gentlemen, Zoli the goalie. Zolan Toth with a 2.94 goals against average, and the only one even close to him. How about Sobieski having a great year like that at 3.20, which in any other year would have won it, and he finishes a distant second. And we talked before about some of the news around the MISL. I want to tell our St. Louis fans that apparently sometime today, Dennis P. Long, formerly with Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, and Steve Frank, an attorney and an ex-North American soccer league player, announced that they were part of a prospective purchasing group headed up by Milan Mandarich, the former owner of the San Jose Earthquakes, and apparently this group is hopeful that they can, by the middle of next week, make a firm offer, and that would be good news for the soccer fans in St. Louis. And we mentioned before about Wichita hitting 5,500 season tickets, looking for their goal of 6,500 by June 14th. First half statistics, Seamus, are close in everything but one, and that's on the scoreboard. Yes, indeed, and uh, I'm surprised uh, indeed that the shots are that close, but when you think back on it, uh, a lot of the shots, uh, the shooting opportunities that San Diego did have were not really converted into shots, but everything very, very even there, except, as you mentioned, uh, the, uh, the goals. 29 fouls, a lot of them coming uh, in the second part of that second period, so we'll see if the physical side of the game uh, continues as we start the third quarter. And it's John Stomeyer with it. He attended college at Indiana University. Gifted player, indoors or out. Right wing now, it's Tabrizzi. Blocked by DeLuca, given away to Clavijo. Now it's Crow. On the left wing side to Zoran Kirich. Over the line he comes. Into the box area. And now P.J. Johns is right there. Andy Schmetzer. Back into the neutral zone area. We're told that the father of the Schmetzer uh, trio will be in Cleveland. Sometime Monday, maybe Tuesday, but in time for Tuesday's game. Maybe we can talk a little bit more about Walt Spencer Sr. What it's like to have three players, three sons playing in the major indoor soccer league. And here in a championship series at that. First time that's happened in MISL history in the championship series. Now the long ball played in and Tote is there with DeLuca right there as well. Now it's Kevin Crow pushing it to Latasur. Jack Latasur near the arc. Pumps blocked by Hoskovy. And now up for DeLuca it comes. Knocks it back to Hoskovy. Kai Hoskovy brings it up slowly. Up to midfield. Plays it long in the space there. Stolmeyer. John Stolmeyer brought it down, but now Tolt is there to make the play. Well, a silly foul by John Stolmeyer there. He lost the ball badly off the uh, glass and uh, had no chance of a challenge on Tolt. Tolt got the ball, and then uh, Stolmeyer just clipped his ankle at as he went by him. Uh, those kind of fouls are silly, and uh, there it's the first foul of the quarter, so it's not as, as blatant as the sixth foul, but uh, sooner or later it sort of converts to the sixth foul. They add up in a hurry, don't they? Yep. It's Valentine now with it. We saw that in the last quarter, especially San Diego. They went from 6 to 11. Allen is taken down, and he's hurting. I didn't hear a whistle. Now it's a whistle. It just yep. didn't sound it. And now they bring the trainer out, or they signal for the trainer, and as soon as they signal, the player's going to go out anyway. It's Al Onofrio. Yeah, it looked like a late foul by Flavio. The first challenge didn't look that solid, but then there was a second one. Uh, yeah, and it, uh, he went between his legs with the tackle from behind, which uh, I don't think you really want to encourage. But uh, he also pinned his left leg between uh, his two legs, sort of in a, in a scissors motion. Uh, 
And I think Allen uh, is, is really uh, not in good shape. He's over on the bench now being treated, but uh, that's a bad blow indeed for Cleveland if he has to uh, leave. Well, for a team that needs some goals, their number one goal scorer right now is on the bench. Ball played back, and it's P.J. Johns knocking it ahead. Crow high in the air to win that one, but Dargle is there. Good thing because Quinn was behind him. Now it's Perez. Hugo Perez brings it back to Fernando Clavijo. Right side to Kevin Crow, pressured by Valentine. Carl Valentine played on Canada's World Cup team back in 1986. Watching the Cleveland bench, excuse me, uh, J.P. Haskovy trying desperately to get things uh, across to his teammates. Nice play there by Valentine. Cleveland almost lost it there, and that was a tough spot to lose it. Soccer's had an open man. Valentine in the space. Dargo in the corner. Lost it to Hugo Perez. Perez. Coming through to midfield, kicked away by Dargle, and then Perez goes down. On the left wing side, it's Tabrizi. Out to Clavijo, he let it go for Perez. Lifting it in for Clavijo, trying to chest it down, then off the boards, walking through Perez, and Michael King's got his man. Good job by Michael King, the second year pro. And here comes Michael, an All-American three times at Fairleigh Dickinson. Came from out of nowhere, actually, this year. He started in the back and ended up with 18 goals. Hard worker. Brian Quinn with it over the line. Holding it against DeLuca. Right side, Ocalis. Now to Hoskovy. Meppa right back to P.J. Johns. DeLuca getting some time now. It appears as if Walt Schmetzer is the one that is sitting it out for a little bit here. And they want DeLuca's experience, knowing he's got the bad ankle, but still apparently he's healthy enough to play in this one. Meppa with a block in the far wing against a lot of sore. Uh, and Craig Allen looks to be okay down on the bench, so Cleveland fans can breathe a sigh of relief for that. McCallis seeming to, seeming to elbow has to be away and gets away with it. Quinn over the line against DeLuca. Right footer wide of P.J. Johns. And the ball is played back to P.J. Johns. Well, normally if it's the San Diego team that we're used to seeing, they've got that killer instinct and they'll be trying hard. They will not sit on a 2-0 lead. But Cleveland, on the other hand, needs to get right back into the game. So we should see some interesting things happening here. Schmetzer gives it to DeLuca. Pasquale, good ball. Stolmeyer blocked by Lattasore. I think that one might have found its way to the back of the net. Both the screen and a foul. Stolmeyer and Lattasore. Nope, it's not Lattasore. He's running to the bench. Oh, we'll have to wait. It'll be Mokalis. Yes. Mokalis and Stolmeyer. I didn't see the collision, but I'll have a chance now. Well, another tough challenge in here by John as he's coming from behind on the side. And the elbow goes into the back and uh, just bowls him over. So it might be a hard fall more than anything else. Well, to add insult to injury, it sounds like there's a penalty going to be called as well. It's 2-0. Soccer's with the lead. 10.48 left in the third. Budweiser and Bud Light join with USA Today to give baseball fans something new. Now for the first time, you can also pick up an official all-star fan ballot. Free wherever you pick up Bud or Bud Light. Vote for your favorite Major League players. Then, test your talent for baseball trivia and win valuable prizes. Okay, maybe... Maybe not. You like this guy at third? How about this... Uh... <laughs> no, come on. Do you, uh... uh, -uh. <laughs> what National League catcher played 11 consecutive All-Star? Says here it was me. Johnny Bench! Andy, how are you doing? Answers are in USA Today every day. So the fans everywhere, settle back with a cold Bud or Bud Light. Vote for the players you want to see in the All-Star Game. And be part of a baseball tradition. Swing and a shot in a right center field may not be caught. I've been impressed also, JP, by the improvement in his touch at the back. Uh, even at the beginning of this third quarter, a lot of balls came to him, and he's confidently struck up at the outside of his foot accurately to teammates trying to break out from the back. And, and it's been a struggle for Cleveland to get good passing and uh, accurate uh, forays from the back. They've constantly been looking face-to-face -face at the San Diego defense. They just have not been able to get by a lot of players. Ball played back to Zoltan Toth. I thought I heard the public address announcer say a penalty, but apparently I'm mistaken. There is no penalty. That's the last thing that the Force won anyway at this juncture. 2-0. The lead belongs to San Diego, but so far San Diego is showing no signs of increasing that lead. Not getting any real great chances the other way. And Cleveland, likewise, not getting anything to make Zoltan Toth.
come up and earn the kind of money that he's been getting in the MISL. And the goalkeepers in this league earn their money. Darnold, right side to Meppel. Meppel, a steady, consistent player throughout his MISL career. Originally started out with the Stallions of Buffalo. There's Allen. He's back and ready to help out. Right side to Valentine. Ten minutes, two seconds to play in the third. Two nothing San Diego. One goal by Cleveland can change the entire complexion of this game. Dargolo is stripped of the ball by Crow. Down the wing. Beating Valentine. Crow saved. P.J. Johns, a great one. Knocked away by Dougherty. P.J. Johns comes up big there when he had to. Boy, impressive speed by Crow coming for him. Maybe taking some lessons from Clavillo. Well, you talk about all the attributes. Crow has size, strength, jumping ability. You don't hear the speed part, but he did blow by Valentine. I was impressed with that as well. Hermes played it in. He wanted Dougherty. He'll get it up the boards, and then he'll put it upstairs into the crowd. So with 9.24 to go in the third quarter, a goal either way, Seamus, could change the complexion. San Diego gets it. They're up 3 to nothing. It could be disaster for Cleveland, but the other way, Cleveland will be right back in. And let's watch Crow's speed down yeah. the way. Crow did very well to get the ball in the first place uh, away from Dargo. And it just blows by Valentine, as you mentioned, and tries to play the ball with his left foot to the near post. And P.J. Johns comes up with a really big save. That's a very, very important save. If Cleveland can get on the board here, that's going to look like a very, very important play to them because it should have been 3-0 uh, there, as it should have been 3 or 4 nothing really, in the second period. Uh, and... Uh, Defensively, they've managed to uh, come up with some uh, near misses, some escapes, even though they've uh, given a couple of opportunities to San Diego and uh, have been punished for it. DJ Johnson played the angle well, and he, he stood his ground, he stood his position, and he was able to come up with a big play. Kitson lost it, and now to Brizzi. Back to Zoltan Tope. Up now to Brian Quinn. Game three, Sunday night at the Richfield Coliseum. Long ball played in, carries to the over three. Yeah, three-line pass. Ball played now by Kitson. Quickly to Stolmeyer. Cleveland pressing forward, needing that goal. Broken up by Karras. Valentine fights to win it. I was impressed with Cleveland's fighting ability Wednesday night and their character. They kept coming back every time San Diego got a goal. Cleveland matched them, and sometimes in very quick order. Johns came out off Valentine. That could have been disaster. Cleared out now on the right side by Kitson. Picked off by Mocalis. Uh, Kitson not helpful there. That was a chance that you really have to, to uh, go for all out and win, and he only gave it a 75% effort at best. On the left wing side for Brian Quinn. Quinn holding it. When he's on, he's their catalyst from the midfield. Knocked back to Fernandez. Back for Brian Quinn. Lifting it. Perez, look out against Valentine. Now Perez gets some help. Brian Quinn holding it. Playing it into Perez. Valentine on him. Perez trying to spin away. Stolmeyer helps out. Hugo Perez. Nice couple of cuts. Left footer. Score! A great ball by Perez. 3 0. Also pick up an official all-star fan ballot free wherever you pick up bud or bud light vote for your favorite major league players then test your talent for baseball trivia and win valuable prizes okay maybe maybe not you like this guy at third 
How about this? Uh... <laughs> no, we're not. Do you, uh, uh, uh... What National League catcher played 11 consecutive All-Star? Says here it was me. Johnny Bench! Hey, how you doing? Uh, uh, Answers are in USA Today every day. So the fans everywhere settle back with a cold butt or Bud Light. Vote for the players you want to see in the All-Star game. And be part of a baseball tradition. Swing and a shot in a right center field may not be caught. Well, look at Perez here controlling this ball beautifully. Nice chest trap, a good first touch away. Quinn gives it back to him. Again, nicely taken, turning, getting away from Stolmeyer. Stolmeyer gives up on him a little bit here. Gives it, leaves it on the one-on-one -on -one situation for Valentine, and Valentine is burned right by it. the deadly one-on-one -on -one player. This is live, and it's behind DeLuca. Haskaby will get it. 3-0. Cleveland really has their work cut out for them now as Haskaby is taken down. Fourth foul on San Diego, two on Cleveland. Haskaby right into the box, and Armstrong heads it wide. Good setup, though, from Haskaby. And now Hermes chipping it back, and Toth is right there. Long throw for Tabrizzi. Off his chest. He'll get control. Holding it. With a 3-0 San Diego lead, he's a defensive runner, and he was right there in the offensive zone, but he wanted to stay with it because he had possession. B, hold it. Cuts on Schmetzer. Julie B, right footer, and a save by P.J. Johns. 3-0 lead here for San Diego with 6.44 to go in the third quarter. Cleveland has plenty of time, but they've been unable to put one by Zoltan Tope. DeLuca holding it in midfield. Knocking it back the other way. We've not seen Gino DeFlorio in this third quarter of play. Looking down towards the bench. I believe he's down there, but he has not seen any action. Valentine off the boards. Crow, right side, Clavijo. And now Dargo settles it for Hoscovy. Good ball, Allen. Wide open, Valentine. Save, Coach. That might be the save of the game. And as soon as he made the save, Seamus Holt and Coach jumping up and down like a little kid playing kid soccer who made his first great save. Wow. Shaking his head there as the coach, and as well he might, because look at this ball beautifully laid off by Stomar, I think it was. I'm not sure, but uh, he curls himself forward, and I think Valentine actually shot the ball into his arm. That might have been Allen with a touch uh, to set him up, but uh, yes, it was Allen. Thank you, JP. He spotted that one. It was Allen with a very nice flick out, and Carl Valentine wanted to just loft that ball over what he knew to be a diving goalkeeper. But I think it seemed like he just played into the back of his head as he hurled himself uh, to try to block it. So a ter terrifically important save by Toth and a backbreaker in many ways uh, for Cleveland that really needs a break. You know what, he makes so many great saves. It's a wonder Ron Newman doesn't just applaud for the bench. It's tough not to applaud that if you're coaching the soccer. Maybe you're just so used to it. It's just routine. Flavijo. And there's a foul called on San Diego. They're in trouble there. That's four. Foul by Quinn as uh, Mepham uh, was scrapping really hard over there. Uh, Hermes uh, has a view on that. There are the fouls for the quarter. Cleveland with only two, San Diego with four. And it's uh, just under six minutes to go. Allen to Kitson. Cutting to the outside. The former Baltimore Blast player gives it up for Valentine. You get off! You get off! Now it comes off. to Dargle. Left there for Dennis Mepham. A 3 nothing lead here. San Diego. Ball played off the boards. Dargle just couldn't get it. Here's Allen the shot off the boards and wide. Looked like it hit off the near side of Tote. Valentine, great play to keep it in. The corner to Allen. Craig Allen looking. Kitson is open. He'll give it out to Kitson. Number seven drags it high and wide. Allen again. Coming back. Top of the arc. Blocked by Lattisor. Up for Quinn. Beppham hustles back. Quinn tackled along the boards. And both players disappeared from view. Well, Dennis Beppham. Made a great play there, just absolutely giving up of himself. There's a foul by Mopalis, number five. Just after the referee called nothing at the other end. Crowd not happy with that, but a uh, good decision. Gets in the map on the drive, and I believe it got off Jolie's fingertips first before it hit up off the crossbar. Mopalis heads it up for Perez, and he lost it on his control. And if you can believe it, Perez, who's had such a great game, was listed tonight as probable with a right hip strain. What a game. Three nothing. Suck. Fuss with shampoo and conditioner? Who needs it? I want to wash my hair and go. And now I can with Pert Plus.
Complete shampoo plus complete conditioner in one bottle. Hurt Plus leaves my hair clean, conditioned, and looking terrific. Before to get results this good, I used shampoo and conditioner. No more. Now, with Pert Plus, I just wash and go. Pert Plus, shampoo plus complete conditioner in one. San Diego, leading Cleveland, three to nothing. Third quarter, a lot of time left, but Cleveland may able to score up to this point. Ball kicked up by Hermes. And off a bounce, it lands into the seats. Both teams think it's their ball. Essie Baharmas is winning it. And Cleveland will be putting it back in play. DeLuca on the near side. Out with Stolmeyer and Armstrong. Andy Schmetzer and Kai Hoskovy. Force with it. Desmond Armstrong on the left side to Andy Schmetzer. For Hoskovy. With his back toward the goal. Kai plays it out. Stolmeyer drills it. Blocked by Perez. Smart ball from Hoskovy. But Perez closed the gap well. Back to P.J. Johns. Right up the middle. Andy Schmetzer. Not a good touch there. And the force almost lose it. Stolmeyer. Trying to win it against McCallis. That should be the sixth foul. No, nope, they call it the other way. Thought they were calling it a McCallis. Five fouls on San Diego. Three on Cleveland. Ball is knocked back by McCallis to Fernandez. George Fernandez has done well for this team, especially in spot duty. And all of a sudden, he's a regular with Brian Schmetzer out. Karich. Nice cut back. Left footer. Too high. Great chance by Karich. He did everything there with his right foot, set the table for his left, and then just shot it a bit high. Hermes with it. Cutting it back on the left wing side to Perez. Knocked back to the neutral zone for Crow. This is the kind of game that Ron Newman was hoping Karich would come up with. Karich knocking it back. Midfield, it's Crow. Sliding it across, George Fernandez. Lifting it, it's headed straight up by Andy Schmetzer. Now Crow right in front of the force bench. Hermes against Stolmeyer played it back too far. Kevin Crow back for it with 3.20 left in the third quarter. A 3 nothing lead here for San Diego. Game three, Sunday night at the Richfield Coliseum in Richfield, Ohio. Long ball, too long. In the corner it goes. DeLuca with a block off of Hermes and out of play. And it'll be a goal kick coming up for P.J. Johns. Well, Timo Leonkowski would like to get that engine started. But right now, it's tough to uh, coach goals from the bench, Seamus. I mean, at this point, it's the players that have got to create the space, make the chances, finish them, and right now, Cleveland is not doing that very well. Well, they're getting very, very few chances. They're creating very few for themselves. They're having a lot of trouble still getting the ball through, through midfield and uh, to the far end with some uh, attacking, uh, with some good opportunities. And maybe the credit should go more the other way yeah, to I'm San Diego. I just going to say that. I think San Diego is uh, playing one of its classic uh, efforts of defense. Uh, literally, they've only scored three goals. They usually do better than that, but uh, the zero on the other side is very telling. Indicative of the kind of defense that San Diego is playing, and when they've made their lapses, Toth has been there to save them, as he has all during the regular season. Back for Kevin Crow. And also, I think they're getting better performances out of some of the players that you don't expect to be uh, big-name players, who are not big-name players, in fact, whereas Cleveland's uh, sort of bench, if you will, really hasn't added very much to their game. In the neutral zone, Meppa heads it up, and that one goes out of play. 2.31 to go here in quarter number three, and San Diego Soccer's are leading over the Cleveland Force, three to nothing. But, you know, Cleveland could, uh, could indeed, uh, oh my goodness. That's Andy that. Spencer. He may have gotten a poke, poke yep. in the eye. Al Onofrio. Cleveland, I was going to say that, uh, you know, in indoor soccer, of course, with about uh, 17 minutes left in the match, two in this uh, period, over two still are not technically out of it although they've got they've struggled so much with nothing uh, to show for it that it's hard to imagine they could get three a v shot easily stopped by johns right now though they've got yep. san diego on the ropes with five fouls and they're not doing anything to try and attract that sixth mepa up for valentine valentine in midfield they need a little bit of the kansas city inspiration right here one of those patented kkc rallies I wonder if dave clements is available for long distance phone calls Brian Quinn back the other way for Toth. Now to Kevin Crow and then back for Toth. To Clavijo. Now it's Kevin Crow over to Clavijo. Right back for Zoltan Toth in San Diego. Doing what they want to here. Perez reversed it. Good idea, but not a good ball. Soccer's get it anyway. V wide open. Played up to V. Nice return as the shot scores.
clinic there on how you exercise, uh, how you execute rather a two, uh, two against one situation. Uh, trying to get rid of this ball. Allen with the first touch, not all that bad a touch, but uh, can't be reached. And there's a two against one. Goes in from Quinn, laid off beautifully by V. And uh, just off the fingertips by number six for San Diego, Fernandez. A very fine piece of opportunism, a lovely touch by V. And as you see, P.J. Johns could get a hand on it, but couldn't claw it away. Fernandez with his first goal of the series. Uh, of the playoffs, rather, and V, who has really done some good scoring and setting up, taking over a lot from uh, Bronco Segoda. And we should remind people, of course, that Bronco Segoda is out for the series. Well, the Sockers right now are doing well without Bronco, strange to say. They were 9-2 and two during the regular season without him. Perez, knocked away by P.J. Johns in the playoffs. They're 3-1 and one without him. And leading here. 4-0, San Diego, Armstrong with it. Cleveland digging themselves into a hole that just seems to get deeper and deeper. Valentine, taken down, foul, six foul. Six foul. But Gino DiPolito has got something else going on the other side because Hoskins arguing with that. Wonder what the argument is there. They've got the six foul here. Yeah, not much question about it. Tabrisi fouling him, and then the ball just shot into his head for good measure by Perez. Maybe that's what he was arguing about. So, um, He's uh, definitely going off uh, for two at 54 seconds to go in this period. I want to get back to that last goal. Isn't the key word there hustle? I mean, Fernandez doesn't have as good a chance maybe as some of the others there, but he just seemed to want that ball more than anybody else out there. Yeah. And he gets credit for his first playoff goal. Four another, San Diego. Cleveland's got a score here on this power play. Trailing at four to nothing with 54 seconds left. Hoskiby lifting it across to Florio out there on the power play. He's not taking a turn this quarter. And the ball is given away. Crow is trying to spring by and Quinn. 45 seconds left in the quarter. De Florio, left footed pass across. He wanted Stolmeyer. Hoskiby kept it in, but it's picked up by Quinn. Ahead to Hermes, two on one. Clavijo is the other player. Hermes cuts it. Clavijo couldn't get a good shot away. The timing was off on both parts there. Normally they like to hit Clavillo when he's got a step ahead and he's on the run. DeFlorio. Power plays tonight. No success for either side. Haskaby. Right across off Stomar. I thought that one was in. Apparently not. Underneath the crossbar. Uh, it was close. It, it should have been in. Uh, it was a great chance for Stolmar. He did exactly what he should do, which is to lift it, but he just lifted a bit too much. He got the great feet as well. Play Allen, but that's it for the quarter. And Allen. Didn't make friends with Zoltan Koch after he shot the ball, but he may not have heard the signal for the end of the quarter. In any event, right now the fans tell the story, and it's all San Diego. They lead it. 4 nothing. One quarter left. Sports fans, grab a sharp pencil, hang on to your hats. Here's another great sports package offer. It doesn't slice, it doesn't dice, but it does supply hours of sports entertainment. I'm talking, of course, about the two great videos available in this incredible wrestling nostalgia package. Tape number one, Wrestling's Greatest Heroes. Tape number two, Wrestling's Greatest Villains. Both feature hard-to-find films of the legendary wrestlers of the 50s and 60s. Many of these films have not been seen in years. Real collector's items. If you were able to find these items retail, you'd pay about 60 bucks, but our price is just $49.95. But don't stop now. You'll also get the good, the bad, and the ugly. The history of pro wrestling. Two collector's videos and a book, just $49.95. Don't wait. Call 1-800-962-2962 and ask for Scores Wrestling Nostalgia Package. Don't sit there like you're pinned in a headlock. Call 1-800-962-2962 now. Basketball at its best. Dr. J, Jerry West, Wilt, and Bill Russell catch the best in basketball with this great sports package offer. This basketball legend package features the greatest basketball players of all time on four videotapes. You'll see the incomparable Dr. J, Julius Irving, the man who transformed the game with an electrifying arsenal of offensive weapons. You'll meet the incredible Jerry West. Drafted by the Lakers in 1960, West scored close to 30,000 points in his career. And Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain, the most dominant player ever to step on a basketball court. You'll also get this Bill Russell video. The bearded wonder was the greatest defensive player in NBA history. The retail value of these great tapes is nearly $100, but we'll send them to you for just $59.95. 
And if you order now, we'll also send you this Kareem Abdul-Jabbar video, the greatest basketball player of all time. That's right, five exciting videos, just $59.95. Call 1-800-962-2962 and order your Basketball Legends package today. Soccer's are leading the Cleveland Force, 4 to nothing, and right now, Sheamus are having things their way. Well, they certainly are. The fourth goal uh, really is just a piece of icing on the cake for them. After they've given the ball away, really, and it was touched beautifully into Fernandez, who makes the good run and touches it uh, just off the fingertips of the goalkeeper. But it all came initially. Allen played the ball off the, uh, the boards. A nice touch, really, that he intended to get over uh, to Meppa. Meppa couldn't get it, and the space was there. The players were there, and Fernandez uh, just was the extra player who got in to get a great assist from D. Now look at this ball laid back. I think this is going to be the shot. Uh, Look how close in the Stolmeyer is. He's uh, practically in, in the goal area, and he just hits it off the uh, off the crossbar. We'll take another look at it. Oscovy with an excellent pass there. Uh, Stolmeyer pulls away from the crowd and just gets a little bit under it too much, and it hits smack off the face of the crossbar with everybody beaten in the goal area for San Diego. But it's that kind of night for Cleveland. It just simply won't go for them. They've had uh, some chances which, if they had been able to convert at other key points of the game, maybe not this point, but certainly earlier, it could have turned the game around a bit and put uh, on a force uh, San Diego to shift uh, their particular style. But San Diego's been able to do exactly what they wanted, which is to defend very strongly, counterattack like Fury, and uh, convert chances that were given to them. Seamus, it's not shots on goal that count, really, but the quality shots. But how can you get a lot of quality shots when you only have three shots in a quarter? And that's exactly what Cleveland had in that third quarter of play that's as the right. ball is played back to Tilt. Very disappointing after they've had a chance to think it over, too, in the, in the locker room, and that's what they come up with. Here's the power play with 57 more seconds left in the fourth quarter underway. Still right has to be a low shot, but right at Tilt. Tilt looking to throw. Wanted Quinn, but DeFlorio heads it, and it ends up going to Quinn. Brian Quinn runs it back right. Knocked away up to Craig Allen. Craig Allen over the line. Knocks it in the corner. DeFlorio off the boards. The pass too deep for Valentine. Allen gets it. Turn around and just misses as DeFlorio. Hoscovy is cut off by Clavillo. Here comes Clavillo. One on one against Stolmeyer over midfield. Clavillo to the outside. Stolmeyer gets help. The shot taken. The stop by P.J. Johns. And Clavillo paid the price as well. And he's caught back. Soccer's no change for him with that defensive runner. Debrizzi on. Valentine on the right. Eight seconds up to the power play. Valentine's a cross pass block of Quinn. Cleveland wanted a handball, but they'll say that that was unintentional. The penalty's over. Dowerty back on. Dowerty chesting it down to midfield. V with him on the run. Two on two. Poked ahead of Julie V. He'll turn. Back for Dowerty, but it was behind him. Not a good ball. Crow looking for Dowerty. Back for Kevin Crow. V wants this ball badly. Open at the top of the arc, but now Crow plays it back to Fernandez. Up for V. Knocked to Dowerty. Looking off the boards for Rorothalo. In the corner off the boards, and P.J. Johns comes up with it. Rolls up the middle area for Craig Allen. Settling it against Dowerty. Now to Valentine. 14-18 to go. Fourth quarter, and San Diego leads it 4 to nothing. And right now, they're in control. But remember, they're in control against Kansas City a couple weeks back, and then lost it. So anything can happen, but right now, Cleveland needs to get on track, needs to get on the board, get that confidence going, and force San Diego to play a little defense. Instead of Cleveland having to defend and not getting any chances to string passes together and end up with some scoring opportunities. 13 minutes and three seconds. Still the play. Fourth quarter. And then if Cleveland ends up Coming back, more power to them. If they lose it, Sheamus, they still have the next three games at home where they're tough. Now they're in danger at the moment of suffering their second shutout uh, of the playoffs. That's right. Up in Minnesota, 7-0 seven, uh, seven seven nothing. Nothing after they had taken the first game in that series, as I remember. Um, well, three games at home, of course, uh, puts the pressure on the, the team that plays two first in some ways. That is, if you uh, have lost the home field advantage uh, and end up playing three at home, love to try to split the first two so you can uh, maybe with a break or two win the whole thing winning three in a row but there's Michael King the other way tackle away Fernandez what an effort from Fernandez against his ex-teammates right side Perez lifting it long Johns was coming out now retreats with Dargo back there 
Carrots with it. Oh. Dargo fouls them and more. Two minutes. Yeah. I was ball. waiting to see if they're going to pull the card out. That was that was a pretty good clip. Yeah, that's a very good. That's really the first uh, first two minute penalty of the of the game, apart from six fouls. He loses the ball here and it just comes in and kicks him in the back. Yeah. Not much question about that. He loses the ball and he loses his cool. Four to nothing. It's all San Diego, and when we come back, they'll have a power play. The Noid wants to make your pizza <laughs> ice cold. But Domino's pizza is hot and fresh. Because they deliver in less than 30 minutes. Sorry, Noid. Domino's pizza delivers hot and fresh. Financial News Network is the only place where you can keep an eye on your money throughout the business day. From before the opening bell to a comprehensive wrap-up on America's business, you can count on the people who know money at Financial News Network. Benny Dargo will sit out the next couple of minutes, and he'll have to hope that the penalty killers can keep the Sockers off the board. A Perez shot goes high and wide. Now it's Carrich with a 4 nothing Sockers lead. Back to Brian Quinn. To be right side, Carrich. Neither team has been able to click on their power play. Carrich in the corner. But there was a whistle and a foul on Cleveland. Yeah. Carrich wanted an advantage there, apparently. But Esther Bahamas is right there close to him. Very close and appear to be in good position to make that call. We can't see it as well from our angle. It's on the near boards. Played out now to Brian Quinn. Holding it from 40. Blocked by Dennis Mepham. And it sails out of play. So a kick in coming up. Well, thinking of our MetLife players of the game here tonight, J.P. Uh, Perez, obviously, a possibility um, for San Diego, a very good possibility, I would think. Ball played across and knocked away by Stolmeyer. Here's Hermes. Why? Now it's Michael King. Juan Hermes, who came into the game with Julie B, tied for the most points in the playoffs, not looking as sharp as we've seen him in the past tonight as the ball is knocked out of play. He's had some injuries. I'm wondering if maybe there's a little problem there as well. Our next telecast will be Sunday night, game three, coming up in the Richfield Coliseum, 7.30 Eastern time at the Richfield Coliseum, where the force have been tough to beat at home. And then Tuesday and Thursday, and we'll have every game for you live and in their entirety right here on FNN Score. We again welcome those watching in the Cleveland area. Although Force fans can't be too happy right now, but San Diego just playing a whale of a game defensively, especially if they lead it 4-0. Here's a carrot shot. It's blocked. Force fans watching the game on WOIO Channel 19 in the Cleveland area. King broken up by Perez. Over the line. Hugo. To the outside. Off the boards wide. Mepham right back to P.J. John. John's wanted King, but he wasn't looking back for the pass. And now a long throw. That's a great throw, actually, in that it kills some time and it doesn't go over three lines because no one was open. They'd rather find someone open. Carrots to Quinn. He probably held it pretty close to that five-second mark as well, so he did well to get rid of it. Carrots across the way, and it's wide. 11 11 to go in the game. 4 0 San Diego, 28 seconds of the power play. Quinn misfired. Perez. Holding against the men in blue. He's dancing to the music. In front, Hermes, save. P.J. Johns, loose ball, and Johns catches up to it. Uh, ball on Hermes. Yeah. Didn't it seem like Perez was dancing to the music here? <laughs> I mean, they're playing the music yeah, here loud enough for him to have heard it, and he was right in step. Oh, Zorba the Greek music right. there, which is... Uh, what they're playing now exactly. would be pretty tough, pretty tough to dance to with a soccer ball. But uh, again, he just uh, freezes everybody. Uh, all the defenders wondering what the heck he's going to do next. Uh, the penalty is over. As you see, Dargle out. Carrich, and he put it upstairs. Great opportunity. Or there was a whistle anyway. Apparently, foul anyway. Uh, I think a uh, push Pushing. called on Hermes. Uh, he comes uh, for the ball. Well, I didn't see it there. Well, the cameraman nearly uh, got a reminder of what it's like to be a goalkeeper in the MISL. That can be a dangerous position, a cameraman. Not well, nearly as dangerous as a keeper. Looking over the Cleveland roster, JP, in all of candor, it's hard to find a player who has really stood out tonight, uh, with the possible exception uh, of Stolmeyer, who has uh, yes, committed a couple of dodgy fouls, but uh, has been just 
really remarkable in his commitment and his effort, which is what uh, they really needed, but from a lot more people than just him. Valentine with it. Off the boards, Hoskovy. Across is deflected wide by McCallis. Dargal after it in the corner to Allen off the boards. He wanted Armstrong, but Tote is there. Rolled ahead to Rothalo. Carriage is open. Long ball. Johns intercepted. Read it well. Pokes it ahead. Allen turning. Blocked by Fernandez. And out of play it goes. And Fernandez has had a whale of a game himself. Sarah, with Cleveland's part, your, your pick, it's premature of Stolmar, but you're really picking because of effort because no one has really done That's well. That's exactly what I was thinking, yeah. That's a tough call, but it's still a long way from being over. 10.03 to go. Cleveland wants to show something. Even if they don't win the game, they want to come back and win the quarter if they can, give San Diego a message and have San Diego know that Cleveland's not going to roll over. And even if San Diego wins it 2 to nothing, I think the people that picked a six or seven game series still think that uh, it would go that way. Ball is deflected away to Fernandez. I know I'd be surprised even if San Diego took a two to nothing lead if it ended in a very quick four game series. Beautiful ball played out from the back by Fernandez. Here's Rotolo, Dowry, the header. And it's out of play. Well, for that illustration, it is late in the game and Cleveland players are dejected a little bit, obviously. But the ease with which Fernandez played that ball out of the back and was, uh, had a good opportunity to play it up to Ruotolo. And his first touch on the ball was of such high quality. I mean, that's some of the difference that you're seeing between Cleveland and San Diego. They certainly do have, a, I think, a, a more skillful bench than Cleveland has. Uh, but Cleveland, on the other hand, has all those days to rest, and you would think there'd be a bit more energy on their side. I'm wondering if, if the layoff may be hurting them more in game two, Seamus, than one, because in game one, it's the adrenaline going. You want to play, you want to get back. Now you have a day off, and now you've got to come back to the grind. I'm wondering if maybe that has bothered Cleveland. They certainly don't look as sharp in game two as they did one, and the coach even admitted that in game one they weren't as sharp as they would have liked to have been. But San Diego on the opposite end has raised their level. Back to Kevin Crow. We'll find out about that after the game, and that might be part of our opening game remarks on Sunday from Cleveland on our next FNN score telecast. Ball is knocked down, and Stolmeyer picks it up. Schmetzer to Armstrong. Right side for Kitson. Paul Kitson in midfield. To join us late, Casamani didn't dress because of a groin strain. So if he is not able to come out there and play, it's knocked in now to Stomar. Armstrong blocked it. It goes out of play. Yeah, and they made six, six quite good passes there in a row, but at no point did they really beat a San Diego defender. I mean, that's... The amazing thing is San Diego gets back into in all the time, and it looks like they're they they got more players out there. It looks like they're outnumbering Cleveland. Now, admittedly, Cleveland's down by four goals. They're not making the runs off the ball that they would make if it were tied up and so forth, or if it were earlier in the game. But uh, you got to commend San Diego for a very, very uh, good discipline defense, even at this stage of the game. Unless the Florio is injured, he apparently has been benched. He only has been out for one shift since the half began, and that was on a power play. Right. And that's been it. Haskovy, far side, plays it across, sent by Armstrong, and unlucky again is Cleveland. Oh. Great, great attempt by Armstrong. King now with a flick for Haskovy. Kicked straight up by Clavijo. And a whistle is sounded, and a foul, the third one on the Sockers. 8.49 left in the game, 4-0. San Diego, Haskovy blocked, may have hit off King as well as Crow. And now it's Armstrong. Good fighting battle of instincts there by Armstrong. Stolmar blocked off his own player, King. And the Sockers take it back up the left wing side. Fouls this quarter. San Diego with more by one. Crow holding it, shielding it. Knocks it back to Brian Quinn. Quinn right across to Pavillo. Right side for Julie V. In the corner. V. And it goes out of play. We'll give the ball to the Cleveland Force with 8.16 to go. And a 4 to nothing lead. As you look at Gino DeFlorio, he scored one goal in game one, was victimized on a couple. And we talked about it before the game with Jay Hoppen, the assistant coach. And he said they didn't want to yank him because it would have looked bad confidence-wise. And may have had people thinking that uh, had, he, had anybody made a mistake that they would be pulled. They gave him a chance tonight. And you got to feel for the guy in the sense that on that one goal, if you remember, Seamus, he did track his man down, just simply miskicked it. He got in the right position, did everything right except for that one last uh, move, you're right. and it I, cost him. The, the fates were really cruel to him. I think he was trying to clear it away, and all he succeeded in doing was knocking it out of the uh, reach of P.J. Johns, and that kept it alive for Perez. 
and Perez eventually uh, put it away. So, and that was a the crucial second goal. Yeah. He did work hard, he tracked his man, and he appeared to have it, but just couldn't control the ball there. Now it's Kitchen on the right. Ahead to Valentine. Holding it. Now to Craig Allen. Allen, sidestepping on V. Right side, they wanted to give and go, but it's blocked and well read, in fact, by Clavijo. Now to Lattasur. Lattasur, one of the very good role players on this team. Up the wing for Lattasur. Jacques Lattasur holding it up against Valentine. 7.28 to go. V, wide on the shot. DeLuca gives it back to P.J. Johns. 27 consecutive starts, but P.J. Johns says he's not tired. He's in good condition. Well, he's he's it as far as the goalkeeping is concerned in this team. Otherwise, they go to Schmetzer. And that's Walt Schmetzer you're referring to. He's got the ball now off the boards for Valentine. I want to get to an interesting anecdote about Walt Spencer. He had played 56 minutes in that game when Nagara got hurt, not as a sixth attacker, but really as a goalkeeper. And I said to him before tonight's game, were you nervous at all when you first came in? He said, no, I wasn't. He said, but when the second half started and I realized what I was into, I was very nervous and I was very scared. First part of the game, it's all instinct. He said, you know, you're just thrown in there, but he's in the dressing room with a half. He's got time to think about it. And now, the butterflies. Perez with it. Over the line to Hermes. Well, he almost won that game. In fact, those that were here say Cleveland should have won it. They lost a tough one. Here's Perez. Valentine got a poke at it. Fernandez leaves it for McCallis. McCallis to the right side for Juan Hermes. Against Walt Schmetzer. Played up now to Kerrich. Outside to Perez. They're working it around. Everyone getting a touch on the ball for San Diego. And Cleveland needs the ball to score. Fast and quick and back-to-back -back if they can. But right now, San Diego doesn't even give them the ball. Mocalis on the wing. There's some nice stuff out there. Now Kitson takes it away with help from Allen. Kitson over the line. Paul Kitson. And now it bounces in on Zoltan Tote. Yeah, Mocalis uh, did his piece of tracking down and came from behind Kitson. Stole it away from him. Kitson unhappy that he wasn't warned about that. Ball in San Diego. Now they give him four, two on Cleveland. Allen with it at midfield, leaving it out for Stolmeyer. You wonder how different this game might have been, Seamus. You remember that header that uh, Kitson had a great chance on earlier yes, in the game? just before the half. Yeah. You wonder about that? You wonder about Stolmeyer's ball that would have been a goal on the power play? Oh, Those were really their best chances. And Craig Allen's uh, yes, one of early. the goalkeeper. Yeah. Early in the game. Could be a different game. Who knows? Ball played in. Karen. Save. P.J. Johns appeared to get his right hand back to make the play. I mean, the way San Diego's playing defensively, who knows, maybe if Allen had scored, nothing else happens. But you got to think that for a Cleveland team, it kind of has to be said it was important to get ahead, not always come back from behind. That may have, may have made a difference. Blocked by Tabrizzi. Now it's Perez. How about Fernandez? Remember the first quarter, he goes down, and it looked like Ron Newman could have been second guess for his decision not to play Schmetzer. Fernandez comes back, and he's been one of the better players on the field. Tabrizzi. Over the line. Tabrizzi in the corner. Crow right across. So oh, Perez would have had the hat trick. Good play by Stomar, though. Would have had the hat trick. Craig Allen leading it and oh. dumped to the play was Michael King. He just tripped. Is I that it? Uh, I thought he could push. Well, he's he looking at the referee uh, with those uh, glaring eyes. But there's no sand around. So, uh, unlike uh, managers of baseball teams, you can't throw anything. They don't throw dirt in this sport, huh? <laughs> well, Clear it on a play. And with 4.22 to go, both teams get a bit of a breather and one more chance to talk it over on the official timeout. 4 nothing. it's all San Diego. Soccer, the most popular game in the world. The World Cup, it's climax. Pele, it's legend. Now you can bring it all home with an exciting videotape book magazine offer. The tape is Pele, greatest sports legend. Highlights from the career of the most popular sports figure ever. The man who thrilled hundreds of millions of people around the world as he led Brazil to World Cup victory. The book is the World Cup. The entire history of the cup in text and pictures, including an in-depth analysis of America's role in cup play up through Spain 1982. The magazine is Soccer Digest, a full year of the number one soccer periodical in the country. Keep up to date with what's happening in the world of soccer with timely articles on American and international soccer, plus MISL statistics and player profiles. And if you order now, we will include the book Warm Up for Soccer. This package could cost you as much as $50, but now it's yours for only $34.95 in this special TV offer. Call 1-800-962-2962 and ask for soccer. Checks and credit cards accepted. That's 1-800-962-2962. Sorry, no CODs. Allow four to six weeks for delivery.
Budweiser, the King of Beers, welcomes you back to the 1986 Championship Series with our Bud Flashback. Brian Quinn on the pass from Gorsuch. He scores to make it a 4-1 to one lead against the Minnesota Strikers. The Sockers are champions again in 86. And they're trying to be champions again in 88. They lead it 4 to nothing, And it could have been 5 to nothing. But Stomar made a nice play. That's right. Stomar going all the way downfield to the right. You don't see him yet. He'll come into the picture here to, to keep Perez away from the ball and doing a good job hooking that ball away from the line. And that's why I still think that maybe Stomar is the player that we should think about as at least the player who's given most effort for Cleveland. The quality of his passing has uh, deteriorated a little bit in the fourth quarter, but that's nitpicking really because he's worked so hard that's bound to happen. I saw P.J. John shaking hands with a few people. I thought maybe he was coming out for the sixth attacker, but Timo Leokoski will keep him in. I'm thinking here that uh, if we don't see a sixth attacker, he may want to keep the score close, not to damage the psyche of the force in previous games, and it paid off, I guess, against Minnesota. He went with that sixth attacker when they were trailing, I believe it was four to nothing at that time, and then Minnesota came on and ended up with that seven to nothing win. But he may still pull the goalkeeper before this is over. We'll see, but that might be the reason for keeping P.J. Johns in. Hoskovy coming back, a 4-0 San Diego lead. Kai Hoskovy putting the brakes on, playing it in the corner. There's DeForio. Now to Valentine. Right wing boards, Valentine again blocked. Hoskovy in the corner. Playing it out, but Quinn will get it. Sockers look to attack in a space for Dougherty while Schmetzer there. Schmetzer was not going to be denied that ball. Walt Schmetzer coming back over the midfield line. The younger of the twin brothers by eight minutes. Valentine. Right side, Hoskovy. Low shot is blocked. Ryan Quinn with it. Up the wing it goes. A lot of sore after it. Shutouts have not been a strange factor in the playoffs. Not in this building, certainly. It happened three times. Alan Mayer back-to-back -back shutouts in 83. Against yeah, Baltimore. Yep. Yeah. 1983 did it back-to-back. -back. And then in 85, Gorsuch and company shut out Minnesota. 7-0. That was their last shutout. May 14th of 85. Right side of Andy Schmetzer. How about those back-to-back -back shutouts? I remember watching those games back four or five years ago. Now P.J. Johns will call a timeout, and I've got to think that right now they'll make the goalkeeping switch as P.J. Johns goes to the bench. It's been a long night for P.J. and the force. Suckers lead it four to nothing, and only 2.45 left. Looking for something different? You could say you're just bringing, bringing my family a little bit closer. I think you've seen it all. Oh, wait a second. You want me to do the question like this, Joe? Fine. Know all the answers? Now, does Ted Turner watch this program? Well, you just might be ready for America's most technologically advanced game show, Time Out for Trivia. Only Time Out for Trivia lets you at home be the contestant and win valuable prizes. Sports trivia at its best. Join me, Todd Donahoe, the commissioner, for Time Out for Trivia on FNN Score. And putting on the change of clothes, the sixth attacker jersey is Walt Schmetzer for the force. For Andy Schmetzer. The only way I can tell the Schmetzer's actually is the hairstyle, and his hair, Andy's, is longer, and his was caught in the collar. So that faked me out. But it is Andy Schmetzer. And with 2.45 to go, Cleveland will try to do something here. They got a goal the other night, Seamus, when they went with a sixth attacker, and it looked good. It tied up the game. But right now, they're down by four with 2.45 to go. I know they say it's not over till it's over, but right now, San Diego's just trying to keep the shutout. I'm impressed by your uh, knowledge of players' hairstyle. This is not something that... <laughs> how about broadcasters? Have you gotten into that? Or? Uh, no. Uh, it, although it would be hard to describe uh, your hairstyle. <laughs> well, that's sort of modeled on Garagiola. You know. <laughs> we'll, we'll give it a try, though, before the playoffs are over. It may be a different story when the two teams return or go back for the first time this time in this series to the Cleveland area, to the Richfield Coliseum. And maybe some home cooking will be good for the Cleveland Force because they have played very well in that building, especially in front of large crowds. And four of the top ten largest crowds in playoff history have been at that Richfield Coliseum. Along the boards, right side, DeFlorio can't handle it. Play back the other way, Stolmeyer. Knocked back to Andy Schmetzer. On the left side, Valentine. In a few strides for Hoskaby. 
out to Valentine. Left side, Hashkovic. Right across, Stolmeyer missed it on the left-footed volley. Stolmeyer again. Andy Schmetzer, a bomb in his block. That's out to Valentine. Left side, Hashkovic. In the corner, Kitson chipping it far side, headed down. Oh, score! I thought it was in in the first one. Let's see who's going to get credit. I saw Toth dive back, and I could have sworn that that entire ball was over the line. I think it's DeFlorio's goal, yeah. and the light never came on. It looked like DeFlorio's goal from uh, my view, too, but uh, let's take a look. Again, it's all Kai has to be. Beating one player, playing it very nicely in. It looks like Kitson's pass might have been a bit too high, but DeFlorio is there. We take a look. He heads it down. It looks like it's well into the net there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well over the line, no question. DeFlorio from Kitson. Here we go again. Now look at this great piece of faking by by Huskabee and laying it over. The nice cross by Kitson and the header. And not much doubt about that whatsoever. Over the line. So Cleveland gets a consolation goal with 1.50 to go. Well, I don't like to beat the goal judge on the call, but in that particular case, I thought it was over and Tope reached back. Four to one. So there goes the shutout. Carrots the other way. Wide of Andy Schmetzer. The four arrow on the header is sixth of the year from Kitson at 13 10. So Cleveland avoids being shut out. Let's see if they can get another one and just get that old pride going as Valentine takes it across the other way. Up for DeFlorio. Back to Valentine. Carl Valentine. Latisola with great pressure. Great pressure. Valentine in trouble. Carrot. No one helped him out with Cleveland either. Valentine was in a hole against two players. Hoskovy. Others were caught up field apparently. Up for Kitson on the lead. Ian Cleveland, former outdoor teammates with the New York franchise in the American Soccer League. That's going back several years. Out to Valentine. A bomb. And it's up too high unless Toth got a piece. I thought Toth got a piece. They're going to say goal kick? No. Same corner. Now they're going to say it. But I think originally, I thought originally they pointed to the goalkeeper because that's why Hoskovy was upset. Well, wow, this is certainly drilled beautifully. Nice form in that shot, and it goes so fast, uh, Cameron, not surprisingly, you can hardly keep up with it. The shot was a blur, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, there's our MetLife player of the game for Cleveland. John Stolmeyer, who is uh, a weary man, but who was given uh, his usual, maybe more than his usual, 110% tonight in the losing cause. On the opposite side, San Diego Soccer, I think it was an easy choice. Yeah, very easy. Hugo Perez uh, with an assist on a couple of goals. But just brilliant play all around uh, for the uh, entire match. On the right side, it's broken up, and Quinn leads for Hermes. Valentine, long way to go. With Hermes on his back, 48 seconds left over to DeFlorio. Four to one, San Diego. DeFlorio's pass blocked by Quinn. Hermes against the sixth attacker, score! Juan Hermes! Again, to Florio gets himself in trouble. He seems to have gotten away from V, but then he gave a bad ball to Kitson, who was knocked by Quinn, and it rolls loose. I don't know if Quinn will get an assist or not, but Hernandez has no trouble with that one. But to Florio wasn't told. Now you see him beat V. Now let's see the, the ball he pushes up to Kitson. And not a very accurate pass. Now he's trying to go actually across court, uh, trying to go across the field and deeper. Uh, it was a difficult ball. He tried to squeeze through there, and, and uh, not a very well-advised pass, but really at this stage of the game, that's once again hardly worth fussing about as they were down by three. Now they're down by four again. Hermes, 11th goal to the playoffs for B. At 14-21, 37 seconds left. Cleared back the other way. Fernandez, one bounce, two. It's in there. Fernandez with a second goal. It's almost virtually immaterial because this game is well and truly over, and the sixth goal is uh, really just for the official record. Goal, Seamus, nine seconds apart. Fernandez, second of the game and of the playoffs. 14.30 left. 
for 14.30 was on the clock. And that's the time of the goal. Quinn with it, 15 seconds left. Officially the goal at 14.30 from Fernandez, or for Fernandez, eight seconds left. Hoskin getting it. Long ball the other way, and the players will just walk it off. This one was over a little while ago. San Diego, Hugo Perez, an easy choice as the player of the game. He got the goals and the assists when they counted. Could have had the hat trick. It's 11 goals and 8 assists, 19 total, making one of the top scorers in the playoffs. We'll recap things and we'll also have our league's play of the game when we return. The Soccers lead it two games to none. They win 6-1. Football games are won or lost by technique. Now, for the first time ever, Coaches Video Network is offering your son an opportunity to learn winning techniques from the nation's top college coaches with these unique videotapes, which feature coaches from Nebraska, Notre Dame, Baylor, Louisiana State, Louisville, the University of Oklahoma, Clemson, Arkansas, and UCLA. Each tape focuses on one key position and breaks it down, covering basic techniques, advanced creative moves, and important mental aspects of the game. These tapes were designed to help your son become a better athlete and more effective at his position. What better gift can you give your son than the chance to learn from the experience of these major college coaches? Choose from defensive middle guard, defensive ends, strength training, receivers, quarterbacks, offensive line, the defensive secondary, linebackers, offensive backs, or the mental game. Whether the football season is beginning or has started to wind down, your son's future is just starting. Videotapes from Coaches Video Network are an investment in his future. Call 1-800-962-2962 for your Coaches Videotape. Order today and let college's great coaches teach you. That's 1-800-962-2962. Don't miss this great offer. Don't delay. Call 1-800-962-2962. The Noid wants to make your pizza ice cold. But Domino's pizza is hot and fresh. Because they deliver in less than 30 minutes. Sorry, Noid. Domino's pizza delivers hot and fresh. Financial News Network is the only place where you can keep an eye on your money throughout the business day. From before the opening bell to a comprehensive wrap-up on America's business, you can count on the people who know money at Financial News Network. Sometimes it's hard to pick our league's player of the game, but tonight, shame it's no contest. No, and also by our Met Life player of the game, Perez. Uh, you know, he's not just any other player. He's, uh, he, he requires double teaming in many ways. And this is what Cleveland tried to do at one point. Now, you'll see the ball being played in here to him. And he's got two players to cope with because Stolmeyer offers some cover, some help to Hospi, but he just flicks it away from him. And, and then instead of just staying on him, Stolmeyer sort of lets him uh, drift to his left and he's created a space created between the two defenders. He sees the space, charges into it quickly, has a bit of a step on uh, the defender Valentine and knocks it into the roof of the net. Really a superb play. The Alix play of the game, the third goal of six for a victorious San Diego team. Hugo Perez put on a clinic on that one. He had two goals and one assist. The Suckers in a rock. CyberVision, the developer of the best-selling Neuropsychology of Weight Control, announces its latest breakthrough in controlling unwanted fat, the amazing Lean Body Workout. Hosted and developed by exercise physiologist Cynthia Carolick, the Lean Body Workout is a safe, low-impact aerobic program that leads to optimal conditioning. Cynthia hosts the highest-rated exercise show in Canada each week. Now you can have her in your own home every day. And with our unique split-screen video technique, you can begin your workout slowly, then build up to a higher aerobic level. Your leaner, healthier body is just a phone call away. Hi, I'm Cynthia Kerlick, and along with CyberVision, we've developed the Lean Body Workout video. It's a great companion for the neuropsychology of weight control. Order now. Here's how to order your Lean Body Workout for just $49.95. Call the number on your screen. Remember our CyberVision guarantee. Try the Lean Body Workout for 60 days. If you're not satisfied, we'll return your money. Call the number now. Order the Lean Body Workout today. Does this look like a diet meal to you? How about this? Or this? You're right. These meals are not diet foods.
They're just three examples of the healthy, nutritious meals you can prepare for yourself and your family when you order the book, Recipes to Lower Your Fat Thermostat. It's from CyberVision, the developer of the best-selling Neuropsychology of Weight Control. When you order this book, you'll find the way you look at food will be changed forever. Recent studies show that diets don't work. You must change your lifestyle to lose weight and keep it off. That's where this revolutionary book will really help. In it, you'll discover hundreds of recipes to help you lose weight and keep it off for good. Meat, breads, desserts, salads, fruits, even potatoes and hearty soups are used in these imaginative recipes. The best part is, you'll eat healthier foods that will reduce your risk of heart attack and other diseases. Plus, you'll lose weight and keep it off. Put an end to calorie counting and order your copy today. Call the number on your screen. Recipes to lower your fat thermostat is just $14.95. Order now from CyberVision. Call now. Your family will eat this up. Well, it was all soccer tonight, and Hugo Perez in particular with a couple of goals and one assist when they counted early, and San Diego led it all the way. They win it 6-1. to one. Tonight's game has been brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, and proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. By Metropolitan Life and Affiliated Companies. Get met, it pays. And by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade is thirst aid for that deep down body thirst. Join Seamus Mallon and I for the next TV game Sunday, June the 5th, the 7.30 start Eastern time when San Diego visits the Cleveland Force. The Force trailing it here. Two games to none in the best of seven championship series. Our thanks to our producer, Kevin Shank, our director, Ken Samuel, and Kathy Nelson on graphics. And for Seamus Mallon, I'm John Paul Della Camera. So long, everyone. This has been a presentation of Bud Sports through the facilities of the SCORE Network.